My dog woke me up at 3.30 this morning and he couldn't go back to sleep. Oh my gosh. And then I had to drive an hour and a half. Drive me all the way home. Yeah, it takes me an hour. Because you're in Tucson too, yes? Yeah. Because it takes me an hour and like seven minutes home. <coughs> yeah, I'm driving down here every three days a week until the 18th. <laughs> but that's all right. So, and I was just checking with you, make sure it's okay. Um, every day, these guys are asking me to please not shut down the computer or shut down the camera during break. Um, Should you put it bars? Yeah, and then, but the mics to to shut those down because they can hear it downstairs and then they come up and they talk to us. <laughs> if you don't mind. Please. <laughs> And there's a Starbucks, like, literally, if you go the back way, like, uh -huh. if you go this way and down the hill, it's below us. Um, and then there's, like, Dunkin' Donuts and Dunkin' Donuts and Chipotle. Like, too much. I mean, I'm in Nogales, and I'm, like, I'm not going to go to Chipotle. <laughs> you know? I know, there's some other really good places, but I, I bring my lunch every time, so I haven't gone to any of them, but everybody here knows them. I mean, even living in Tucson, going to, to Chipotle, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I go to Street Taco, it's the exact, yes. like, the exact same food, but yeah, those so guys, much better. Yeah, those guys um, used to work at Trader Joe's, and then they took their retirement and opened that place. Good morning. Got the morning right now. It's good. Good morning. Uh, she's coming to the warehouse. Yeah, she's coming in. Seems pretty new, or like yeah, uh, newer, redone. Yeah, uh, everything's really nice. Like, mm. like I, haven't, I haven't been to that one. Looks <laughs> like 
I think I think it was here before, right? You were here last time. Oh, that's right. Okay. I see. Okay. So uh, just a reminder, I have to remind everyone every single day to remember not to record, of course, the jurors. And you can only record when the judge is on the bench. When he's off the bench, you need to turn off the audio and the video because in other instances, the camera kept rolling and they were live streaming, and that's not good. Then we get in trouble. Is it okay if I just switch the bars to the left on mine? And the video as well. Right, if I switch to, if I switch to my camera and bars. Okay, I don't know how it works, but you yeah. make sure you don't live yeah. stream it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that means. Yeah, it'll be good because okay. if we shut down the camera, yeah. um, then we have to redo every time. The okay. key goes to bars, we can't. And hear bars. anything. Okay. And then he'll shut down the mics. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. That yeah. works. Yeah. Thank you. And then, I don't know, can you talk to Lucy? Because so, I'm not going to be here tomorrow, but a different floor guy is. Yes, and he's he in the middle. Okay. okay, that's fine. But, but then that means I won't be here for the weekend. The person that's going to be tomorrow here, right? Yeah, but then I come in Tuesday, and there's no way for me to be there. Okay, let me see if I can get permission. I'm yeah, just going to ask the judge overnight because... Okay, cool. Hopefully he'll let me. He was really nice to me the other day. Yeah, he was. Like, oh, it's, it's not up to us in administration or the judge. It's more, it's mostly our security team. Let's just get it there. I'll try to, I'll try to get a, a green light on that. Yes. <laughs> I push a little. Oh, babe. <laughs>
Show the presence of all the jurors, counsel, and the defendant. We're on the record. The state will call its next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. The state calls Agent Heredia. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Good morning. Would you please tell the jury your full name and your occupation? Correct. My name is Roberto, middle initial E, last name of Heredia, with an H. I'm a Border Patrol agent working for the uh, Nogales Border Patrol Station. Sir, could you spell your last name for the court reporter? It'll be H E R E D S and dog I A. Thank you. You're welcome. Could you tell the jury just a little bit about yourself? Um, I've been with Border Patrol for approximately, going on 15 years here in uh, July. Um, I've been stationed in the Nogales Station my, my whole career. Um, I am a local, uh, raised here in Nogales, Arizona, currently living in Rio Rico. And what sort of assignments have you had over that 15 year period that you've been here in, at the Nogales Border Patrol Station? Uh, I, I've had numerous assignments ranging from undercover work to, uh, detention work and uh, part of a mountain team for approximately five, six years. And in January of 2023, what was your assignment? I was assigned to the east side of uh, Nogales, Arizona as, as part of that mountain team. Did that include the Keno Springs area? Yes, it did. I want to clear up a question um, one of the jurors had earlier with another witness. Um, before we get started on the events of January 30th, could you tell us the difference between a checkpoint and a port? Yes, the, the port of entry is the main entry into the United States. Uh, that is usually manned by uh, CBP officers, custom officials. A checkpoint is further in the interior of the United States, uh, primarily checking for uh, immigration status, um, and is primarily manned by uh, Border Patrol agents. So uh, checkpoints are you all green shirts? Correct. Border Patrol? Correct. And then ports of entry are blue shirts? Blue shirts, that is correct. And the ports of entry, those are right on the border? Right on the border, correct. And then you all are responsible, if I understand correctly, for the checkpoints and everything in between the ports of entry? That is correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so now I'd like to talk about January 30th of 2023. We heard uh, another Border Patrol agent talk about his experience. Um, did you go to a, an academy as well? I did go to an academy. Uh, the academy was in Artesia, New Mexico. 
academy was approximately four months for me because I, I know how to speak Spanish. So I didn't have to stay for the Spanish part. And you had the same field training um, as other officers, is that right? Uh, that is correct. And the probationary period? That is correct, except uh, the exception of mine, at the time I came in, my probation was two years instead of the uh, regular one. Now I want to talk about January 30th of 2023. Were you on duty on that day? Correct, I was on duty. And were you called to 100 Willow Cross Circle um, in Keno Springs? Yes, I, I, I do not, to be honest with you, I do not know the exact address, but it was a Vermilion Ranch. Vermilion Mountain Ranch? Chris, correct. Do you know the homeowner's name there? I, I knew after the incident, but Mr. George Allen Kelly. And that location is in Santa Cruz County? That is correct. Can you tell me on January 30th of 2023, before you got this call, what were you doing and where were you located? I was located um, somewhere along Highway 82, uh, I think around the area of the, of the Circle K, um, just prepping for, for that day. I was prepping to patrol the east side, uh, Duquesne Road, uh, all that area. And the Circle K you're referring to, is that the one in Nogales? The one in Nogales, Arizona, by uh, Highway 82. Okay. And so is that the road that leads out to where Keno Springs is located? That is correct. Further north should be a that road that takes you to King Springs. And so that would be northeast of where you were in Nogales, is that right? Correct. So what time were you dispatched to this call? The call came in at approximately 2.40 p.m. And when you received the call, what information did you have? Uh, the information that came out through the radio was uh, something to the effect that uh, the owner of the Vermilion Ranch had uh, reported that there were people shooting at him in his property. And did you respond to the location after you received that dispatch call? Yes, I did. And were you in a vehicle by yourself or did you have a partner in your vehicle? I was in a vehicle by myself. Do you know um, how long it took you to get there? It must have been approximately 15 minutes. And when you, when you arrived at the location, um, can you tell me were you, you said you were dispatched at 2.40, um, but I'm a little confused about that. Were you dispatched prior to that and arrived at 2.40 or did you, or did you get dispatched at 2.40? I believe I got dispatched approximately 2.40. And would your, would your report refresh your recollection on that issue? It, it would. I can have just a second while I find your report. Yes, ma'am. Why don't you move on while your co-counsel talks on this report? We'll do, Judge. Thank you. Pretty sure I had pulled it. Um, I'm sure we can. So, um, after you got there, uh, were you the first to arrive? Was there anyone else there? I was the first one to arrive at the scene. And when you got there, what did you discover when you approached the property? Uh, I got off my vehicle. Uh, the front gate of the property was was shut or, or locked. So I remember jumping the front gate. 
uh, and making my way towards the uh, front of the ranch house. And when you made your way over to the front door or to the front of the ranch house, what did you observe when you got there? When I got there, uh, I observed a lady uh, that was at the door of the, of the ranch house, at the front door of the ranch house. Uh, I was maybe, I wasn't quite at the front door, I never made it that way, but um, I talked to the lady, I wanted to make sure she was okay. Um, the lady stated that she was okay. The uh, lady stated that approximately... Okay. I'm not offering this for the proof of the matter asserted, but for what this officer did next and why he went the direction he did. The objections overruled. So I think this is the first time I'm giving something that we call in the law a limiting instruction. And that means uh, I'm giving an instruction about what the evidence is being admitted for um, that the witness is going to testify to. So the question was, what did the lady, who we all assume is Mrs. Bell, say to him, and uh, that is hearsay because Mrs. Kelly is not here in court testifying to it. But it's not offered, there's an instruction. This is not offered for the truth of the matter asserted. So it's not offered, and you should not consider it, uh, you should not consider what you were about to hear that Mrs. Kelly said as being proof of the truth about what she's saying, okay? It's only being offered to explain what this officer did next. So just theoretically, hypothetically, putting this situation aside, hearsay can be admitted. Let's say some other case, some person yells, there's a fire, there's a fire, there's a fire, it's burning over there. It might not be true at all, but it explains why the firemen ran or the police ran to that location, went to that location. Could turn out to be true, could turn out not to be true. It's not offered to prove that there was a fire or that the fire is actually existing. It's offered to prove what this witness did next to explain his subsequent actions. So for those reasons, with the limited instruction, the objection was overruled. That's, I, I went a, lot, a little far on that than I usually do, but that's to explain what a limiting instruction is. Thank you. Agent Carreria, um, you said there was a witness that you had a woman, a lady at the, at the home, is that right? That is correct. Did you at any point discover the identity of that lady? No, I, I didn't know her name. I didn't know who she was. No problem. And so you spoke with her. Could you describe her? Do you recall anything about her description? Uh, the clothing, I, I, I cannot recollect the clothing. I know she had uh, white hair, uh, elderly looking lady. Okay, thank you. And so you spoke with this lady, and what did was it that she said to you at that point? Uh, again, I asked if she was okay. She stated she was okay. Um, she stated that 15 minutes prior to my arrival, uh, her husband and her had seen approximately five individuals or five subjects near the south end of the property that were carrying long arms and bundles of narcotics. And what did she tell you next? Uh, she said that her husband had taken off after them and she pointed in this gesture pointing south uh, she said that her husband had taken off walking south towards towards the subject, I assume. Now, you described um, the area where you hopped the fence, so I'm going to show you a map. I'm just going to show the electronic version. Agent Heredia, do you recognize this general map? Yes, I do. And what does that appear to be? That appears to be uh, George Allen Kelly's uh, res residence, the ranch. Um, the state moves for admission of State's Exhibit 114. No objection, Your Honor. 114 is admitted. May I publish, Your Honor?
And just for the jury's information, this is actually 114. The slide says 115, just so as not to cause any confusion. And can you tell me, sir, um, is this the area? Can you tell the jury how you approached um, the residents when you first got there that day? Okay, I parked with the front gate. Um, is there a way I can show them here on screen or no? Yes, if you touch on the upper left, there should be a little stylus. It'll give you a color. There you go. And then just you can just um, touch the screen with the stylus. That is the front gate uh, that I was referring to. Um, I parked my vehicle right next to that front gate. I got off the vehicle with my service issued a rifle, my M4 rifle, and I hopped the fence made my way down this road. Before you try to draw on that, sir, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna um, make it a little larger. Yes, ma'am. Are you able to see the gate on the zoomed in uh, copy of uh, zoomed in I, I photograph? Am. Okay, I could am. you show us then where the where the gates are? Gate should be right around the gate. And that's the area where you parked your car and hopped the gate. That is correct. And then where did you approach the house? I jumped the fence here. Walked towards the house this way. I remember at that time uh, there was a, a truck parked here and I make my way here and I think Mrs. Kelly was right there uh, at her front door. Okay, and that's where she was when you spoke with her? That is correct. What's the next thing you did after you spoke with Mrs. Kelly and she told you that her husband had gone south after the, after the subject? Okay, I told Mrs. Kelly to shelter in place. Uh, my concern at that time was the armed individuals, and I was by myself. So I went back to my truck to wait for backup. And uh, that's why I did. hopped the fence and then waited for backup at my truck. Okay. And were you aware that backup was on the way? Yes, I was aware. And how did you know that? Because my agent, uh, my partner agent, Paul Duggan, who was riding a separate vehicle, also acknowledged the traffic. Did you hear anything at that point? Once um, my partner arrived, uh, I could hear sirens uh, in the background, and it turned out to be uh, Santa Cruz County Sheriff officers. So were they very far behind? They were several seconds behind my partner. And then after you heard the officers, um, after the other officers arrived, what did y'all do? So we had like, I, once I made contact with the Santa Cruz County officers, I, I told them the information that Mrs. Kelly had given me. And uh, again, our, our priority was armed individuals. So we made our way back to the to the house, to the ranch house, I'm not sure this. So I met with officers there. We made our, our way back. And then we did like a hasty uh, perimeter check. And what do you mean by a hasty perimeter check? A hasty check? perimeter check, we just checked around this area. Uh, make sure that everything was okay. There was no armed individuals in the area. And after you, and what was the purpose of doing that? Again, uh, we're looking for first of all, Mr. The well-being of Mr. Kelly, and uh, make sure that there was no immediate threat to to the residents of the house and to us. And after you did that perimeter check, what did y'all do at that point? 
after this, the quick Casey perimeter check, um, I don't know the direction where everybody went, but we found out. So uh, I, I just saw like sheriffs going this way, sheriffs going this way. Uh, my partner, Paul Duggan and I, I believe we went this way. I don't believe we went that way, we went south. In the direction where Miss Kelly had pointed that her husband had taken off to. And I'd like to show if you <coughs> another exhibit. <clears throat> so I just want to make sure um, you said you headed off in the southerly direction and and if I'm clear that's because of what Mrs. Kelly told you about where Mr. Kelly went is that correct that is correct and so I'm going to show you another exhibit Take a look at State's Exhibit 115 on your screen, please. Yes, ma'am. And does that appear to be a larger map of the Kelly property? It is. Your Honor, move for admission of State's Exhibit 115. Your Honor, I have no objection. Of course, this exhibit says 114. It would be good if they would cross that off and mark it as 115. It's getting confusing when the numbers aren't the numbers that you put. Exhibit 115. Your Honor, it's not the exhibits that are the issue. The exhibits are properly marked. It's just the slides. And could we publish, please, with the court's permission? And, sir, you said you headed out from the house and that you headed south. Correct. Um, do you see a, a dirt road on this map? Yes, I do. Did you follow that dirt road or did you go a different direction? No, I didn't follow the dirt road. We, uh, I'll use the term bushwhacking. We, we just went through the brush across that dirt road. And could you show the jury what direction generally you and your partner traveled? Yes. So from the house. That is more or less the direction we traveled. We didn't cross the road. I, I overreached there, but we didn't. We stayed on the road. That's when we uh, saw Mr. Kelly walking uh, towards us. So when we got to this point, okay, I'm going to clear it now. Um, Mr. Kelly was walking this way towards us uh, with his two dogs. Okay, we'll get to that in just a second. Yes. I want to talk about your, your trip. And I just want to make sure, you, you said earlier that your partner Dugan was with you, is that right? That is correct. So the two of you were traveling together on this path through the property? Correct. And when you traveled through that property, I see that it the line you drew looks like you went through a wash. Did you go through a wash or an arroyo? Yes, we went through a wash, arroyo, yes. And when you traveled through that area, did you make any observations of any kind at that point? No. Did you see any people or any sign of foot traffic? No, I didn't see any people, I didn't see any. Were you looking for foot traffic at that point? I was just looking for, you know, armed individuals for the safety, but no, I wasn't looking for any particular groups or anything like that. Okay, so you, but you didn't see any anyone as you were traveling through there? No, I did not see anyone. And when you approached the road and you saw Mr. Kelly coming, which direction was Mr. Kelly coming? And was he, what was he on the road? Was he on the trail or off the road or where was he? He was on the road and he was walking that direction, but on the road. And you said he had his two dogs with him? He had his two dogs with him, uh, very friendly, um, came up to greet us. They licked our hands, uh, which is very playful dogs. And what did you observe about Mr. Kelly as you saw him walking down the road? When he was walking towards us, towards us he had a rifle uh, cradled on his left arm, kind of like the way um, hunters cradle their rifles. That's, that's the way he had his rifle. 
and I, I see you making a gesture, but could you um, show us, show the jury what you mean by that? Yes. So the rifle he was cradling, um, he had his arm like this, and the rifle was cradled across his chest. So across his chest diagonally and over his right shoulder? Yes, yes. And holding it with his left arm? Yes. Thank you. And when you observed him, uh, what after you greeted the dogs, what's the next thing you did? And Mr. Kelly, I advised Mr. Kelly, I asked him if he was okay. Mr. Kelly said he was okay. And then he stated that uh, I, I, I told him that we responded to the area because uh, the call came in and that there were people shooting at him in his property. Uh, he stated that he had seen around five to seven individuals carrying bundles of narcotics around the ranch house. Um, Can you pause for a second? Does that accurately reflect the statement you just made? Yes. And he told you they were carrying narcotics? Yes, they were carrying bundles of narcotics, yes. Did he say anything about seeing any firearms? No. And what's the next thing he told you? Um, he stated that he knew the difference between uh, regular illegal aliens and mules. Uh, because he had been living in the area for a long time. And what did he tell you his observations were about these people? After we kept on walking on the road, and after that, he stated that he had heard a gun, a okay. gunshot. Let me stop you a second. I want to go back to his statements about knowing the difference between whether someone's an immigrant or, or what was the other phrase he used? A mule. Okay, mules. a mule. And when he indicated that he knew the difference between the two. Did he tell you what was the difference in his mind? Well, the, the mules carry big um, bundles of marijuana on their backs, big bundles of narcotics. On That's back. what he told you? I, he said bundles of narcotics. Okay. And so did he tell you why, how he knew and which he believed they were? He, he's, he, he believed they were um, mules because of the big bundles, and uh, he had been living in that area for a long time, and he could tell the difference between a regular illegal immigrant and a mule. And at that point, did, did he reference large backpacks as well? I, I, yes. So does that statement on your screen now accurately reflect what Mr. Kelly told you? Yes, it does. Okay. And what did he say um, happened next? Uh, he said that he heard he had heard, heard a gunshot. He had did heard. Did he tell you when was that before or after he saw these individuals? After he saw him. After okay. he saw him, he heard a gunshot, and that he did not know where the gunshot came from or who had shot, but he did emphasize that he saw the mules running back south towards an international boundary fence, as if they were scared. And the statement I have on your screen, does that accurately reflect what Mr. Kelly told you? Yes. And you said additionally that he didn't know where the shot came from? Correct. Or who shot? Correct. And that they appeared scared? Correct. And does that accurately reflect what Mr. Kelly told you? Yes, it does. Did he tell you anything else at that time? No. Did he ever say that he was shot at? No, he never stated that. He just said he heard a shot? Correct. Did he ever tell you um, at any point that he saw any weapons? No, he did not say. Did he ever mention anyone pointing a weapon at him? No, he never said that. Did he ever tell you that he was afraid? No. Object to leaving. No, he, he never stated that he was afraid. Uh, he didn't look like he was afraid. He looked, he was calm. He it's, didn't look nervous to me. So his demeanor at that point was very calm? Yes, very respectful, very, very calm. The weapon he was carrying, did he ever tell you that he discharged that weapon? No, he never stated that. That's all I have for this witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. 
Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, and I did have to go back to have him take a look at the time. I, I forgot to ask him that question. Could I do that? I figured out it's Exhibit 53. <laughs> Is that have you refreshed your recollection? Yes. So was it the time you were dispatched 240 or the time you arrived 240? It was the time I was dispensed, the time that the radio call came through. Okay, thank you for clearing that up. Yes. That's all I had, Your Honor. Thank you. How would you like this part? You guys have problems with back up. Uh, May I proceed, Your Honor? Good morning. Good morning. Okay. So you are the first law enforcement representative to arrive at this, I'm going to call it for short, the Vermilion uh, Ranch, correct? Yes. And had you ever been there before? Not at, not, not at the ranch house itself, but I've worked that area before. Okay. So knowing the area, how far is that excuse me, got the hiccups. How far is that location to the border wall? If you were to go as a crow flies, what would you say it was? About a mile. A mile? And there's no direct road to it, right? I mean it's kind of a roundabout way to get there if you were in a vehicle, correct? To to get to the border? Yes. That is correct. Okay. So roads aren't like a crow fly but there's terrain in between that, uh, Mr. Kelly's house and the first point of the border wall, correct? Correct. Now, in this terrain, and it's hard to tell visually uh, when you're not looking perpendicular to the ground, but from the aerial view, we have uh, States Exhibit 114 still up on the overhead. Can you see it? Yes, I can. Okay. Now, this area is encompassed with other ranches around it also, correct? Correct. So it's not an easy place to just stumble upon, is it? No, it's not. Now, you said you worked this area for quite a bit. Is that right? That is correct. And you actually expressed your knowledge about this terrain, not only possibly a little bit in your report, but also to Detective Einza, didn't you? Correct. So let's talk about this area as it relates to what Mr. Kelly believed is his knowledge as far as it's concerning mules and tra trafficking. What do you know about it and the dangers of this area? Um. Objection, improper um, request for opinion testimony from a lay witness. Go ahead, sir. It is my, what I'm giving you is my personal opinion about the area. Um, and your knowledge from experience, yes. sir. It's, it's, it's a dangerous area that we work. Okay. 
Elaborate why you believe it's dangerous from your observations and your experiences. For, for us, I, it's a... Excuse me, can I just show an ongoing objection? Thank you, sir. Go ahead, sir. For us, it's dangerous because it seems that out there in the desert, everything's out of getting from the vegetation to the, to the heat, uh, potential, you know, bad individuals. That's, that's what we consider a dangerous area. So bad individuals, um, it's not a normal place for someone to go rob a bank, is it? Uh, no. Okay, so we got a different type of bad individuals. What's the activity that you would classify some examples that would fall under people that are these bad folks that you're describing? We, we could potentially run into uh, armed individuals, you know, there are up to no good in that area. So when someone's armed out there, it wouldn't surprise you if this family saw armed individuals, correct? Correct. Okay. And what known activities or reasons do you believe with your experience um, would be going on if a person's sitting there armed, especially with long arms? If there's an armed individual out there, either it could be a hunter or it, it could be a a bad person, usually uh, guarding the narcotic loads coming through the area. Okay. So the fact that Mr. Kelly has lived out there for quite some time, that's what you learned, right? Correct. He was acknowledging with you that he was aware of the potential terrain and potential dangers of his, of his property, right? Well, he stated that he knew uh, what the subjects that he had seen he knew that they were meals because he could tell the difference. And so over the years, there's been migrants, people, you know, just trying to get over the border for the American dream, but there's been illegal activity in this area. And he felt his experience, did you interpret it this, that he felt that he knew the difference. This wasn't just people trying to run to the, over the border. Objection, Your Honor, calls for speculation. The question was how this witness interpreted what Mr. Kelly was telling him, so the judge was over with. Yes, my interpretation one from what he said, uh, he stated that he had seen meals, uh, not illegal aliens. And the fact that he's been there long enough and acknowledged that, you had no reason to disbelieve that he believed that to be happening, correct? Correct. Okay, because it was reasonable, correct? Objection, it was reasonable, Your Honor, correct. Again, calls for speculation. It's what he feels, sir. What was the objection? I'm sorry. Speculation. What was the question? I asked if he believed it was reasonable. As for this witness, believe. Okay. I believe it was reasonable. Thank you, sir. Now, you knew you were there because shots were fired, right? That's what the call came through, that shots were fired in the area. So therefore, there had to be guns if that statement was true, correct? Correct. And the fact that you first interchanged with Miss Mrs. Kelly or the gray-headed senior woman, um, confirmed independently, now that you're looking hindsight, confirmed that that call was potentially a legit call, correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, and she was a nice lady, wasn't she? She was. And you had no reason to believe that she was lying to you? I did not. Did you learn that she was only in the house? I only saw her in the house. I didn't know who else was in the house. So you, yeah, I didn't ask that, but did you learn that that's all she, she never came outside, that the whole time she's been in the house, did you learn that? No, my okay. first initial encounter was her at the door. Okay. The front house. But she greeted you at the door as you walked up. Did you knock or was she picking out the glass door? No, I, I, she was already out when I got there and I never made it to the front entrance. I never made it quite to the door of the house. Okay. Now, they do have glass doors. Are you aware of that? No. Okay. And they have a lot of glass windows. Are you aware of that? I'm not aware of it. It's just what I you know, sir. No. Just what you know. I'm just checking to see what you know. Not aware. Okay. Now, did she, so she didn't make it clear where she saw these people running, correct? She just stated at the south end of her property. Okay. So you don't know whether, she, with that comment, you don't know if she observed it from within her house or outside the house, right? I have no idea. Okay. That. Yes. Now, when things were over, the extreme situation was over, 
Um, she, you made a note that um, Alan Kelly followed or ran after, what was the words that you used? Uh, she stated that she, she pointed south, uh, a gesture like I'm doing, stating that Mr. Allen had taken after uh, the direction of the subjects walking. Okay, now, so he was walking and you don't know if Miss Kelly, Mrs. Kelly or the person that was in the home and Mr. Kelly, which you later met, correct? Correct. Okay, you don't even know if they had any communications since this event took place. No, I did not know that. Okay. So, if her version of it could be from what she observed, correct? Correct. That she knew he was walking in the direction south. Correct. With the two dogs. She, ne she never stated anything about dogs. Okay, you saw the dogs. When I met with Mr. Kelly, yes, when I saw him first. And those dogs followed him everywhere, didn't they? Yes, they were following him. But they're very curious dogs, aren't they? They are. Friendly. And they are <laughs> they are almost um, true to their uh, breed, but always looking around, smelling out everything, uh, curious about the train as, as you all are walking, correct? Yes, they were kind of like running circles around and play, playful, playfully. But they were interested also in the terrain. Did you notice almost like a hunting technique? They're smelling and observing everything on the ground and anything around them. I, I did not notice that. Okay. Um, but inquisitive. They were curious about you. Yes, they were. And they approached you to see who you were. They did. Okay. And you didn't call? No, I did not call them. And how many dogs were there? Two dogs. Okay. Now, looking at uh, this exhibit that's posted on there, um, put down, redraw the line that you took once you left the house to go start to search around. Once I left the initial house after we did the hasty perimeter check, is that what you mean? Uh, you got back up. <laughs> You back up, went back to the house. So let's start with that perimeter check. And that's for your safety and the homeowner's safety, correct? Per correct. All right. So put that circle around the house as you did before. Okay, now, would it be that wide of a, or closer to the home? I think, I think that would be reasonable. Okay, did you, you, you were aware of the uh, bob wire fencing that exists in the back of the house? I, I, I think, I believe I, I did see the, the barbed wire fence, but I'm not entirely aware of where it is because I've never been to that ranch house. Okay. I worked around the area of the ranch And house. you didn't personally work the field that is behind the house that everyone else searched, correct? No, Agent, Agent Paul Duggan and I, we, we kind of stayed around this area. We never went here or here or, or okay. this area. You drew some lines before. I'd like you to put them back on of the search outward while you guys went the other way uh, and ultimately met Mr. Kelly. So as, as we were walking down towards Mr. Kelly, from my observations... Uh, Why don't you use a different color on that one? I will. Let me... Uh, you can hit undo. One of the jurors has asked whether the uh, yeah, large picture was there. I have no objection. Does that help? Can you move the device? Yeah. Can you move it to the right? I think that's Ms. where everything okay. happened. I know Jim was upset. Ms. Winkler? Let's undo your markings. We'll do. Oh, is that it? Good. All right. So let's start with the perimeter. We've cleared the board. Since we blew it up, it changes your markings. Um, now, ultimately, um, while this is blowing up, are you able to show where your car was parked at this point? Yes. Okay. Now, if you notice, there's also colors that you can change. Okay. If you, if you bring that house a little bit south, because the, the gate is way up the top, I can, I think that's better. Okay, just show that. 
Okay, I'm gonna show it in, a, in one color and then I'll switch colors. All right. That's, that's where my vehicle was parked. Okay. The direction you took that ultimately you found Mr. Kelly would be the opposite way of the vehicle or the same direction? A, a opposite way of the vehicle. And so, if, if I could ask the state now to move the screen to just where that dot is at the top so we can go down. And we're still I'm going to clear the dot again. Okay. All right. That's right there. Go ahead and put your dot on there. Thank you. All right. Now, you went down, you greeted Miss Kelly, you went back, you got some backup, and then you came back into the, uh, into the uh, property, correct? That is correct. Okay. Now, you had some lines. Uh, well, first of all, the, the search, the perimeter search of the house. Let's go ahead and draw that. Um, you could use, let's just use one other color for the searches. Searches. So that's a okay. kind of hasty perimeter check approximate. Okay. Now, earlier, when the state was asking you questions, you started to show which way you went, and we could keep that. Um, and you were part of this circle, right? I mean, you were searching the perimeter too. I never I never made it to the eastern side of the house. I kind of like stayed on the on this southwestern part of the house. I never went with the sheriff's all the way around. Okay. Just, just help this, this side of the house there. All right, let's take the direction that you think you were heading to get to the barn. We're gonna look at the barn later, but set us off into a direction. If I'm not mistaken, it was kind of like in this direction that, I bush, that we bushwhacked. Okay, and you describe what bushwhack was. You're not following the roads, you're crossing the terrain. That's correct. Now, while you're heading that way, show me those lines that you had that showed other officers checking out in a, another direction in the field. Okay. And just to know, these are approximate. Uh, we get that. Yes. Okay. That's approximately the, the way I saw. Okay. The officers branching out. And you're not reflecting these lines as the number of officers, right? That is correct. Do you even know how many were searching? Approximately, from what I can remember, approximately seven, I would like to say. All right, so there were quite I mean, a bit I mean, of officers. Yes. Okay, so why don't you, just in between each of the lines, put the same uh, magenta color, whatever that is, just put some dots in between to reflect other people being there. other officers. And were they a combination of Border Patrol and Sheriff's Department? No, just Sheriff's Department. The only Border Patrol agents at that time was Agent Paul Duggan and myself. Okay. So the two of you are gone to look for the homeowner? Correct. Okay. So um, with a yellow, a different color, yellow would be great. There is an Arroyo out here and you had to cross through it if you bushwhack this direction, correct? Yes. Did you follow it or did you just cut through it? Cut through it. Okay, so why don't you just kind of like as if it was a highlighter, give us an idea of where this arroyo uh, encompasses this side of the house. The, the arroyo should be um, a, a little bit south. You know, south of like at the end of that white line. That's where the arroyo should be. So further down? Further down, correct. I didn't mean to do that, let me undo it. Sorry, I'm sorry. If 
we could just zoom out just to drop or move the map up just to drop, please. Stay. Can, can you move it now up just to drop? Uh, no, can't do that. Can you? If you zoom out, would it change your lines? Do you see an arroyo in this photo right here? Yes, I see the arroyo at the southern end of the white line. Okay, so I know we came off our, our drawing, but if you could just take a yellow and try to show where that is. I'm going to put a circle around. Well, try to follow it a little bit. And maybe a circle at the other end that you think it's which direction it goes in. That's the arroyo. Uh, and the arroyo runs kind of like this way. Okay. And it continues up through the right side of the map, correct? That is correct. Okay. And arroyo, arroyo is a ditch, a ravine, correct? Uh, arroyo is the Mexican word for wash. Okay. Commonly formed through waterways, right? Correct. And commonly uh, maintaining different elevation than ground level. Yes. Because of erosion, correct? Yes. And, and most commonly and specifically here, if this ditch or uh, wash is lower than the ground level that the house is sitting on, correct? It, it is. Yeah. And its deepness depends on where you are in the aurora, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so we got lower elevation running up, and you can see this. And then if we could now go to uh, the next slide that you all used, which I think was 115, please, Kim. Thank you. Well, you can use the sure. okay. Would you like me to clear the lines on my own? Yes. Um, now, let's put a small circle around the house. And if you were to follow the yellow brick road, because it is kind of yellow, that's, that is a pathway or a place where one could walk on and ultimately it takes you to a building, correct? That is correct. And uh, did you have a chance to observe this as Mr. Kelly's barn? Yes, well, when we were up top, when we were Mr. Kelly, you, you could overlook that. Because you're at a warehouse. high, I apologize. Yes. You are at a higher elevation where you greeted Mr. Kelly, correct? That is correct. But if you follow that road down with your eyes, you would see the barn and a... Um, The pump house, correct? Yes, the pump house is up top, uh, and the barn or the steel warehouse should be down there. Okay, if you could circle bottom. that, please. Yes. Both of them. Yes, thank you. That is the pump house. Yes, sir. And that is the steel building, the barn. Okay. So the fact is, when you caught, when you not caught, but came together with Mr. Kelly, put a little X with a different color where you observe, approximately, where you observe Mr. Kelly with his two dots. Real close to his pump house. Real close to that pump house, correct. And you don't know where he was coming from. Was he, was he approaching you, though? He was walking in the direction we, were, we came up, yes, on the road. So far as you know, he could have been checking on his barn to make sure everything was safe. Correct. Okay. And did he reflect that? Oh, he never stated he was checking on, on his farm. Okay, but you didn't ask, correct? No, I did not ask. All right. And people you encounter are only as good as to the questions you might ask, correct, as far as gathering information? Yes. It's, you've been trained to ask good questions uh, to, to try to learn facts. Correct. And so if you don't ask him a question, he may not know to give you a answer, right? Correct. It's fair. Now, I mean, you are the trained one, and I would assume that victims, as Mr. Kelly was that day, 
um, are not necessarily victims every day to know what, what you might be looking for, right? Right. Now, just to give you some information, I know you were doing your best to reflect how he was holding this gun, and I get the cradling, but did you know Mr. Kelly is left-handed and that rifle might have been flip-flop from the direction that you said? I, I had no idea. Okay, it's but you just saw the cradle. Correct. Okay, and you don't know, and you know the barrel is pointing up in the sky. Yes. Okay, whether it's this way to the left or this way to the right, I'm using my hands, and that's for the court reporter. Um, the point was, he was holding it in a very safety-minded way, correct? That is correct, kind of like hunters do. <laughs> right, and a good hunter doesn't point, or anyone that uses a gun will never just swing their barrels around and point it at people, correct? Oh no, otherwise we would have had a problem. Yes, you would have been threatened, felt threatened, and acted accordingly, correct? Yes. You did not feel threatened? No. Okay, so it was a very respectful carry on his own property, correct? Yes. Anything illegal about that? No. Okay. Um, this property is outside the city limits, I would assume. Yes. Sheriffs responded, yes. correct? All right. We do have a Nogales <coughs> Police Department, correct? We do have a Nogales Police Department. Yeah, correct. and they did not uh, come to the scene at all, correct? They weren't there when I was there. Okay, so it's probably a jurisdiction thing, correct? Correct. And so sheriffs usually cover the county, the outside areas. Is that fair to say? That is fair to say. Okay. So he's walking up calmer now that everything seems safe, that he sees law enforcement. Is that possible? That is possible. Okay. Because I would feel safer if you were next to me. You look like you could protect me. Is that reasonable? That is reasonable. Okay. And there's two of you now. He now knows law enforcement is at his home, his homestead, correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, in the uh, the border, this is the south direction. The uh, <coughs> house to the barn is in a southern direction. More or less, yes, general southern direction. Not perfect, right? Not perfect. Okay. Um, and then to the right and to the right south you could glance down yonder so to speak and see the border wall correct correct it would be off to the distance though right yes correct. a good ways away but you could see it correct now When you were going back to uh, why, why people in this area um, potentially uh, illegal um, immigrants that are crossing through his property or anyone else's property would likely to have guns, they're guarding, what are they guarding from? What are um, the different things? They, they could be guarding, if, if they're carrying narcotics, they could be guarding the narcotics. From Border Patrol? No. From whom? From, um, we call them rib crews. Okay. Um, rib crews are people that um, steal the narcotics from other mules. Okay, so this does exist. It does exist. Right. Now, would someone carrying illegal, this is with your personal knowledge, sir, okay, and your training, would someone that's illegally carrying um, a narcotic, smuggling a narcotic, like, would they try to hide as they're crossing the border to get to a location? Yes. I mean, they're not going to say, here I am, right? Of course not. It's an illegal activity. You're being discreet. Correct. Why would someone like that have a walkie-talkie on them? I imagine so they could coordinate, um, you know, picking up other drugs or the routes they're taking. Okay. So not only to find the person they're distributing to, potentially, but also could there be others watching out for any border patrol? Yes. And although you all have cameras as a group, correct? Sure. Surveillance cameras I'm referring to out sure. there. Um, they're not a perfect system, are they? 
nothing's a perfect system. And it's hard to track people going through these auroras, right? There are arroyos. Um, it would be hard, yes. Okay, because they're lower? Correct. Um, and the cameras, I would imagine you got a, have you ever seen the camera system? I've seen camera systems. Okay, and do they have the ability to zoom around and look around? I can discuss operational. Okay, that's fair. I'm not that interested. Um, were you at the uh, scene when there was another call later on in the afternoon? Was I at yeah. Mr. You... Kelly's? No, I was not. Okay, so this is the only incident that you went to. That is correct. Are you familiar with the word Duquesne Road? Yes, I am. And is it a common area for drug pickups? We've had some drug pickups there in that area, yes. Okay. Why else do you know about that location? I, I patrol that area in, in the past. Is Washington, the word Washington was used in this, in this hearing, is it related to that area at all? Yeah, Mount Washington is, is a big mountain east of uh, Duquesne Road. Okay. And if a person was in that area um, carrying backpacks and long arms and stuff like that, is that would that be suspicious to you? Yes, it would. Okay. Um, you said there's a mountain there. Is that something that allowed people... Does that allow people to help look out the terrain around it? Yes. Okay. Um, and so walkie-talkie communication could be done that way too, correct? <coughs> correct. And would it be common for anyone that might be doing this type of activity to have binoculars on? I think that's fair to say. Okay. And I'd like to show you we'll let her get it up a second here. I'll, I'll move on with another question. Yes, ma'am. Um, just how far, do you have any idea how far Duquesne Road or Mount Washington or that area would be from to Mr. Kelly's house? Oh. Um. I want to say anywhere from three to four miles. Okay. So with time, it's walkable. It's, I mean, someone could walk that distance. Yes. Okay. Um, Would you like to clear the circles? I just hold on. Uh, at this time, I'd like to republish what's already marked in evidence, JJ, defense JJ. For all to see. And we will, you can get rid of those lines. Oh, sorry. You're doing good. <laughs> okay. This is a, a photo that's already been admitted into evidence, and we're not asking you anything specific about the person. My questions are reflected upon the clothing, okay? And um, there is a there is a walkie-talkie on the right hip there, um, a pair of binoculars and a fanny pack and camouflage coloring of clothing. Would this be, um, could this be, um, run along the, the theory that this person could be someone that might be either a scout or trafficking drugs? Would this appearance surprise you? Being honest and looking at the photo, to me it could be a scout or to me it could be a hunter. Okay. Now, of course, you don't see a rifle. You don't see any guns in this photo. Um, and you don't know when this took place, this photo. But the camouflage and, and going, and if this person was on private property, 
uh, would that be appropriate place to hunt? It would not be an appropriate place to hunt. Okay. And does a person like this that may be set out, I don't know, uh, let's say out in the terrain, way far out there, would a person wearing these type of clothes blend into the terrain? You could blend into the terrain, yes. Okay. I mean, obviously, if you're in front of someone, you're going to see it, right? Right. But what if they were more than a, I don't know, a half a mile out? Would it be harder to tell this person's there? That is correct. And that makes your job harder also, correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, Just a minute, Your Honor. What was uh, the lady in the house's demeanor? Could you tell? The lady was, was calm as well. Um, not, not agitated. Um, she seemed, she appeared to be safe. She didn't look hurt or injured. Does she seem concerned? I would, I would call it a little concern, yes, especially pointing a direction where her husband had taken off. She... And you got information somewhere in this case where you, um, the, and did this come from Mr. Kelly, that he heard a shot after he saw them? Yes. So we knew there was gunfire, correct? I never heard the gunfire, but that's what the call came as, and that's what Mr. Kelly stated. Okay, so we knew, based on your information, there was a gunshot based on the facts. Based on what they told me, right. I assumed there had been uh, I get it. You're gunshot. not an eyewitness. Correct. Right? Okay, I, you're a responder. I get Correct. that. Mm -hmm. But taking the facts that someone called in, there were shots, and confirmed by two different people, there's no reason to doubt it, was there? No. So we have one shot, as he said, he heard a shot, right? That is, that is correct. So a shot usually reflects singular, right? Single gunshot. Correct. Not a few, not a lot, but heard, or shots, plural, but a shot, correct? A shot, correct. A gunshot. And were you aware there was one shot in the victim's body that was found later? Did you learn that? I... I do not know anything about it. Um, I asked if you learned I, it. I'm not aware. I haven't learned anything. Okay, thank you. So when you said that he never said he discharged, um, did you ask him? No, I didn't ask him. When you talked about uh, was shot at versus um, didn't know where the shot was, it was close enough for them to be, be to be real, correct? Correct. If they're stating that he heard it, yeah, it must have been close. Yeah, I mean, it's not a shot off the distance. We don't call about that, right? We don't know if it's hunting or other things, right? That is, that is correct. It could be a rancher that saw a rattlesnake two miles away and you hear that echo. That's not concerning, is it? It's, it, it could be, or it could be not. It depends. Yes, yeah, not out in the ranches, though, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like it's a residential suburbia area. Again, like I, I can't sp it'll be speculating to that, but yeah, could be good or it could be bad. Houses are nowhere near. They're not. They're not butting up to this um, property or this home, is it? No. There's a lot of land all around here, right? Yeah. Yes. And, and um, are you aware that Mr. Kelly owns over 100 acres? No, I'm not aware of that. Okay. And, but if you look around, it's hard to see. You can't even see houses, really, for that matter, can you? Not really. Okay. Um, but whatever the shot was, was concerning. And seeing people running by with backpacks and rifles means it had to be visual. It had to be close enough to see it, right? Correct. Well, he can answer it.
And he did. The answer was right, correct? Correct. Okay. If you're if if people were out in the train a mile away, terrain mile away wearing the type of clothing you just saw in the photo, that would be very difficult in this terrain to see, wouldn't it be? Correct. But if something's real close that you can get a feel that five to seven people or whatever amount of people running by, um, that means this thing had to, th these people had to be close enough to observe, correct? Correct. And depending where the uh, the homeowners were, that would um, be able to be considered on what distance from that location they were, correct? Correct. Okay, because you don't know if they were in the house or outside yet. You, d you don't have that info? I do not. Okay. Um, so, people um, that appear to be illegals from their attire, so running and shooting on their property and and trespassing are all crimes, correct? Yes. And doesn't that make Mr. Kelly and his wife potentially a victim? Potentially, yes. Also, I think it's a good time to take our mid-morning recess. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a 30-minute recess. It's um, 20 to 10. We'll be back in court. Please be in the jury room ready to go at 10 after 10. On recess.
in that witness's field of expertise, and may also state reasons for those opinions. So, uh, you hear expert witness, right? You're thinking some guy with a PhD in front of his name. It could be, but it, you don't need a PhD in front of your name to be an expert witness. If you have uh, education or experience sufficient to be able to state an opinion with some expertise on an issue, then you can be an expert witness. You know, just by way of an example, there's actually cases reported with things like, you know, some 10-year-old kid being brought into court and testifying as a witness on butterflies in the area. Well, how is that possible? It's a 10-year-old kid. This kid had an amazing butterfly collection. And that's all he did. He was just obsessed with butterflies. He had a butterfly collection. There was an issue in the case about butterflies in the area for whatever reason. He was qualified as an expert. There was no greater expert about butterflies in this particular area than this kid. Ten-year-old, no PhD, but not by education, maybe somewhat by education, but by experience, he was an expert. So um, and then they, in the screen back to the instruction, it finishes as follows, and this is important also. But expert opinion testimony should be judged just as any other testimony. You are not bound by it. You may accept it or reject it in whole or in part, and you should give it as much credibility and weight as you think it deserves, considering the witnesses, qualifications, and experience, the reasons given for the opinions, and all the other evidence in the case. All right? So that was one of your preliminary instructions. And again, you get a set of final instructions that will include an instruction about this as well. But I just thought I'd refresh your recollections about that now. This is no comment by me about this witness's testimony or any other witness's testimony that's given an opinion. I, I express no opinion about that. I just thought it was an appropriate time to remind you of that particular instruction. Thank you. All right. Um, Ms. Lothar, I think you were continuing with your cross examination. Thank you, Judge. Let's go back to a couple points that were discussed and get a little more clarity. Uh, the first one, you talked about his demeanor about being calm at the time you met up with Mr. Kelly, correct? Correct. So knowing the incident, the call, and the fact that he mentioned shots were fired, it seems that that as a judge of a, you know, you're a police officer, have to observe things, correct? I'm a border patrol agent, correct. I have to ensure things. And, and, I, and I didn't mean to insult you. Uh, but law enforcement. In law enforcement, you are a law enforcement officer, right? Correct. You have a specialty area of the field. Uh, but as a law enforcement officer, um, it's important to observe uh, people, body language, other things that's going around you, correct? Correct. So knowing, going back to the compound question, I apologize for that. Knowing the, the things you learned on the call, the follow-up that you got from Ms. Kelly and uh, Mr. Kelly, or whoever the white-haired lady was, um, the fact that he appeared calm now takes some urgency that the threat might have subsided to some degree? Correct. Okay. That would be your interpretation, right? Correct. The fact that the gun was lowered, not raised up in any kind of assaultive um, handling of the rifle also shows his relaxed um, state of mind. Correct. And, I mean, he wasn't being nervous. Can, can I correct yes. myself about the state of mind? I, I, I wouldn't know anything about the state of mind, but his demeanor seemed to be, appear relaxed to okay. me. Okay. And we could use the word demeanor. Um, his demeanor did not seem nervous at this time. It did not. Like if he shot someone and was scared about it, you would expect someone to be nervous, right? In my opinion, I would expect somebody to be nervous, shaken up, basically upset. Mm -hmm. Now, you mentioned those officers, a good handful of officers, um, I don't think you counted them, but you reflected it as being how many around seven, eight? Approximately seven. Okay. And we'll hold, we won't hold you exactly because I don't think you were necessarily responsible for that area of the search, correct? Correct. Okay. So, but you observed quite a few, a good handful or more, of 
law enforcement, which you believe were sheriffs, correct? Correct. Combing out a f area or a field that we saw you draw lines out, correct? Correct. And they were spread out um, like a search should be conducted, right? Correct. And you learned how to do those kind of searches, right? Correct. And so you spread out so many feet apart, that way, um, and you proceed forward, so that way you could all cover as much area, but be as thorough as possible, correct? Correct. Did you ever learn later that that area that the search you observed was the same area that a body was found? I learned that a body was found. I do not know the exact location, how it was found, or who found it. So you never heard it was the same area that law enforcement combed over? You never heard that? Well, it was a general area, but uh, yeah, that's where I had okay. a general area. I know that even though you didn't respond later, a lot of times there's a lot of communications because you were involved in this case. You had a part of this case, correct? Correct. Now, there was mention of running these subjects, running by or with backpacks and long arms, right? Correct. So, I know you don't know exactly where everyone is when they observed it, and I heard that. But if these subjects were running, something was causing them to run, most likely, correct? Most likely, yes. I mean, unless you just like to run, to run with all that heavy equipment, guns, things that might have been on the person, um, running away from something is not uncommon, correct? Can you rephrase that question again, please? It's very well likely that this group that was running could have been running away from something. That is correct. I will pass the witness. Thank you, Your Honor. So let's start back to the area that y'all searched. Now you talked about doing an originally doing just a little perimeter search. Is that right? That is correct. And then after that perimeter search, all split up, correct? Correct. We all found out in different directions. And you all headed south. Is that right? Correct. And when you headed south, were you observing? where the sheriff's department officers went? Not precisely. I had a general idea. They were to my east uh, for situational, situational awareness purposes and safety, but not exactly where they went. So you know they headed east, but you don't know specifically where? I do not. So if we wanted to know where the sheriff's department officers searched, we have to ask them. Is that fair? That is fair. I want to break it down a little bit on the timing um, because I think you corrected me that you got dispatched at 2.40. Is that right? That is correct. That's when the call came through. And I thought that's the time that you arrived, that that's the time you were actually dispatched. Correct. So if this call actually initially came in at 2.30, it would have been 10 minutes later before y'all were dispatched. Correct. And then you said it took you 15 minutes to get there. Approximately. And so that would put you there about 255? Correct. And then you waited there for the other officers to get there. How long do you think you waited? After I went to the front of the house, came back. Seven to 10 minutes, possibly. So we're talking a little bit after three, is that right? Yes. So a little after three, then you all get there and you do that perimeter, initial perimeter search. How long do you think that initial perimeter search took you? Approximately 10 minutes. So now we're talking about 310, is that, is that fair? That's fair. And then when you finish that initial perimeter search, you all headed south. Correct. And how far do you think you hiked south of the house? I would like to say about a quarter of a mile. How, yes. long, do you, how long do you think that took you? About 10, 15 minutes, possibly. So now we're talking 320, 325, is that right? That is correct. 
So that would have been almost an hour after the original call that you finally found Mr. Kelly. Correct. Now you said you thought there were seven sheriff's department officers. Do you know that for certain or is that a guess on your part? That is a guess on my part, that's approximately. So if the officers say there were a different number of them, would you dispute that? I would not. So the defense is asking you to speculate about what the defendant may or may not have done an hour before you made contact with him. Is that what your understanding was of their question about what was causing his demeanor at that time? Correct. And it's been an hour. Is there any way that you can know what caused Mr. Kelly to be calm at the time that you observed him? Of course not, no. The defense also asked you to speculate whether Mr. Kelly's response to this incident would have been reasonable or not. Is that what your understanding is of what they asked you? Yes. What that is based on is entirely on what Mr. and Mrs. Kelly said to you, though. Is that correct? That is correct. So you wouldn't know whether this is reasonable or not unless you actually observed what happened, correct? Well, correct. Now, the judge has asked you to uh, allow you to testify to some issues on expert testimony. And so I want to ask you a few things about your specific expertise. Correct. Now, in the years leading up to this arrest um, and to this incident in January of 2023, can you tell me? How long it had been since you had a narcotics arrest in the Keno Springs area? Narcotics arrest, uh, at least approximately two years that I, before the incident. It's probably the last time I had a, a narcotics uh, seizure in that area. And the defense, what are the majority of the arrests in that area? In those two years prior to the incident, uh, mostly uh, just regular groups of illegal migrants. When you arrest migrants, do they have weapons generally? Generally, they do not. Can you tell me the last time you saw an AK-47 <clears throat> prior to January 30th of 2023 in the Keno Springs area? Personally, I, I haven't seen an AK-47 in that area. Ever? Ever, not me. Are you familiar with any rip crews in the Keno Springs area? No. What's the last rip crew that you're familiar with in the Santa Cruz in Santa Cruz County? Um, the time uh, Agent Terry was shot and killed. And when was that? Approximately 2010. So it's been. 13 years before the crime, or before this crime, that you are aware of a rib crew in Santa Cruz County? Personally, you weren't correct. Now, the defense asked you about um, the Royos and some of the roads that lead down to the border wall. So if we could go back to that. And I want to go back to Exhibit 114. Actually, I think it's Exhibit 115. I corrected the numbers on the, on the slides, so. Exhibit 115. 
Your Honor, could we publish that? Yes. Everybody can see that. So let's talk a little bit about the arroyos that run through the Kelly property. Um, defense asked you a bit about them. I think you highlighted those with yellow before. Is that right? That's correct. Um, those those arroyos or washes. Do they um, go first to the east to the national forest? It, it depends, but yeah, they they branch off from the national forest. Coming down, I believe. So they go from this road here, I'm trying to figure out, from the road, uh, the Kelly's driveway. It branches sort of <laughs> east and north, a little bit to the north, is that right? Yes, that is correct. And the one that goes east and north, uh, does it go off the Kelly property? It, it does. And onto the National Forest? It does. And is there a Border Patrol road uh, along where this wash comes out in the National Forest? It, it could be, I, I would need to look at the map, but it could, it could be, uh, yeah, leading up to the to where the fence is, or. Is there a, a border patrol road that goes? There is a border patrol road. Along the east of the Kelly property, south to the border? Yes. And then you can see that the wash also goes sort of southwesterly, is that right? That is correct. And are there also border patrol roads that go um, towards the border on in that direction. Well, I wouldn't say they're called border patrol roads. They're they're forest, uh, national forest roads. But yeah, there's there should be some roads intersecting those watches. They're actually forest service roads, right? Forest service roads. Correct. Okay, I meant to say that you all use them though, correct? Yes, that is correct. And so that wash act actually empties onto another road as well, correct? Yes. And that road sort of does that road sort of cut along the bottom of the border wall? Yes. Defense asked you a little bit about the bundles that Mr. Kelly talked about with you. Could you tell us, could you describe for the jury what those bundles that he was describing to you looked like? Usually uh, meals, as I stated earlier, the people carrying bundles of narcotics on their backs. Uh, usually big square bundles, half of a size of my torso or bigger, uh, usually wrapped in burlap and uh, they're heavy. And did Mr. Kelly describe the bundle to you, or did he just say bundles? He just said bundles. Can you tell the jury, um, have you also seen like a woodland camo backpack? Yes, usually migrants, regular migrants, um, use backpacks, kind of like school backpacks, the size of school backpacks. But they're imprinted <laughs> with that woodland, woodland camel, kind of like the, the ones that hunters use with the leaf imprints, uh, green in color, brown in color, yes. And when you see those woodland camel backpacks, do you generally see those with migrants or with narcotics? With migrants. Fanny packs. Do you see fanny packs sometimes? I have seen fanny packs, correct. Who do you generally see the fanny packs on? Me personally. I see them usually on females. Uh, I have seen them on males, but the majority of the time, females will use the fanny packs. And when you see them on males, what's the situation generally? It, it depends. Um, could be anything. Could be anything. Could be migrants, could be narcotics, could be anything. Could be scouts, could be anything. Yes, correct. Radios. Who do you generally see radios on? Radios. I. We see them on, on scouts, people that are leading the groups, but I, we have seen them on 
a maintenance as well. So it depends. So sometimes you actually see them on an alien, not just a scout. Correct. And when you see them on folks you term scouts, that could be for migrants or for narcotics. That is correct. It could be for both. And is that also true for binoculars? Correct. And but you also see those binoculars on other folks as well. Correct. Um, is you see them on bird watchers? Bird watchers, hunters. Uh, The photo that the defense showed you, the photo that the defense showed you, um, do you have any idea what that photograph depicts? The, the photo of, of the person that was perched up on, a, like I stated, um, it could be a scout, it could be a, a, a hunter. I, I wouldn't be able to really tell what it was. You couldn't see a weapon in that, correct? No. And you have no idea when that photo was taken or who it is of? I have no clue. So I want to make sure I understand exactly how far away the Washington camp area is from this location. You said you think it's three to four miles away, is that right? Approximately, that's my thought, yes. And you talked about how that might be a potential load-up area for narcotics. Is it also a load-up area for migrants? Yes. I wanted to ask you a little bit um, about the location of the Kelly property. Now, the Kelly's house is actually to the no far north of their acreage, correct? Oh, 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 what was the other land? I'm sorry. Of their of that parcel, that 170 acre parcel, they're pro they're right at the edge of where their their fence line is, right? You talked about where their gate is. Yes. I'm going to check, Your Honor. He testified before he wasn't that familiar with this area. Well, Jackson sustained as to the first question you asked was, is it close to the border of the Kelly's property? There's no foundation that he knows what the outlines of their property are. But then we asked the question about whether they're not, how close they are to the fence line. So just we asked the question, sure. something for which they may be comfortable. You know where the Kelly's fence line is, correct? The, the front gate, yes. I, I don't know the whole property, yes. But the fence line and the front gate. The front gate, I know where it is. And that's pretty close to the Kelly residence, correct? That is correct. Because you hopped that wall and we saw that on the map. I, I hopped that fence, correct. Okay. And what's just to the north of the Kelly property? It's just open fields and a, and a road. And just to the north of that? Should be Keno Springs, the, the road. And is that a residential neighborhood? That is a re residential neighborhood. Correct. And are there a number of houses in the Keno Springs residential neighborhood? Yes, quite a number of houses. And it's not, is it that far north of the Kelly property? The road's about a mile, but how, how far north are the, are the residences? About a mile from, and, from the property, yes. Okay. Do you know what a Normandy barrier is? I do. Could you describe that for the jury? At the um, end of our area of operations, or the end, let me rephrase it, at the end of the fence, the bollard fence, uh, where it ends, where it stops, there's these sort of barriers uh, put in place. They're steel barriers made out of uh, steel uh, sections of rail that resemble the Normandy barriers used in France during World War II that were put in place by on the beaches by the Germans. That's why they're called Normandy barriers. So once the fence ends, uh, we have this section of Normandy barriers to prevent uh, vehicles from driving into the United States with you know, illegal narcotics or weapons. 
So is that just basically mm -hmm. big crisscrosses of metal? That is correct. And is that, you said it's past where the where the border wall ends. Is that to the east of the border wall? That's to the east of the border wall, correct. So would that be in the area where the National Forest is? Yes. And that's east of Kano Springs? Yes. I think that's all I have. Thank you, Agent. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions for this witness on the jurors? I see none. Very well, sir. Thank you. You may step down. No, thank you. The state calls next week. Thank you. And the state calls Deputy Monreal. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry, Your Honor. The state calls Gary Wisdom. Sir, if you would please come over here. Have a seat. Good morning, Mr. Wisdom. Can you please state your name for the record? Gary Wisdom. And I think the common spelling, but can you spell your name for the board? So, I've got some different speakers up here, so it's very difficult for me to know what the committee has to do with that. So, if you have a problem, you've got to represent us. Come over here. Sorry. Mr. Wisdom, can you just spell your last name for the board? W I S. D O M. Good morning, Mr. Wisdom. Can you just also then briefly introduce yourself to the jury? My name is Gary Wisdom. And how long have you, are you a resident of Santa Cruz County? Yes. What, what part of Santa Cruz County? Don't give me the address, but what part of Santa Cruz County do you live? Uh, east side. East side? Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with uh, Mr. Kelly's Residence? Yes. Where are you in proximity to Mr. Kelly's residence? Uh, I live on North River Road. For us, where is that in direction to Mr. That's, Kelly's? Uh, south of the Little Red Schoolhouse. Well, I don't think anyone here knows where the Little Red Schoolhouse is. So, are you to the west, to the east, the north of Mr. Kelly? Uh, to the north. To the north. In Keno Springs? No, North River Road. Okay, close by. How as a as a crow flies? How far <laughs> how far are you away from Mr. Kelly's residence? Oh, probably about six miles. Six miles. And how long have you lived here in Santa Cruz County? I was born and raised here. Born and raised in Santa Cruz. And what do you do? What did you do for a living? I worked with. Uh, Utility company for a few years, and then I went to work for the golf course in Kino Springs. And then, are you still working for the golf course? No, and I do sometimes. I do things for them, but not very often. And what do you do now to keep your days busy? Uh, take care of my cattle. And how many head of cattle do you have? Oh, about 36 head. 36. Captain season about to start? Yes. Have you always had 36? No, I had more than that at one time. I got rid of some because we didn't have any rains last summer. Rain, help, rain dictates how many cow you keep on hand, right? Yes. 
and that's for the vegetation in the area. Right. Are you free range? Do you allow your cows to go wherever? Free range. And do you ask other neighbors to allow your cows to graze on their property? No. No. I lease from Keno Springs. You lease from Keno Springs, okay. And obviously you know uh, Mr. Kelly? Yes. How long have you known Mr. Kelly? Uh, 20 plus years. A long time. Quite a while. When I say no, are you acquaintances or are you friends? Well, we've been friends. Like friends, like you see him every week? Talk no, to each other? No. No, I just, I've known him about 20 plus years. Okay. And I'm just going to jump forward to, you've, were you in Santa Cruz County around January 30th last year? Yes. I don't want to talk about what you may have heard, but you're aware of what happened on January 30th, right? Yes. You know what happened or allegedly happened, right? Right. Did you speak to anyone? Did you speak to anyone, either Mr. Kelly or Mrs. Kelly, after January 30th? Yes. Who did you speak with? Mrs. Kelly. And did Mrs. Kelly indicate to you anything about January 30th? Is she actually here for me? I'm, I'm asking if, if she's yes or no question. So yes or no. You can answer yes. Could you repeat that question? Did Mrs. Kelly indicate to you anything about the event of January 30th? Uh, Just that's a yes or no, Mr. Wisdom. Yes. Did you have conversations with Mr. Kelly? Yes. Your arm on. Asked to go on to the.
going to take a little longer than I expected. I'm going to excuse the jury. I'll stay here in the courtroom with uh, the lawyers, and we'll work on this issue. I'll have the bailiff take you out. Please stick around. Don't go too far away. It shouldn't take too long. Before. Rise before. sidebar conversation, not getting a very specific statement about what this witness would say or it's anticipated he would say. So let's do a little trial run on that and see where it goes. Sure. So we're going to ask some questions. This is like a trial run. We're going to, again, there's no right or wrong answers. This is honest answers, right? So just give an honest answer. We're just going to do a little trial run so I can hear what the nature of this testimony. Just you know, I, I review the transcript, so I will correct myself a little bit. Mr. Wisdom, did you have a conversation with Mr. Kelly about prior instances of people on his property? Yes. And do you remember how long ago that was? Two years ago. Two years ago? Two, and I think your transcript indicates two to three years ago. Would that be about right? Yes. And that conversation was about what? Yeah, he had phoned me up. And did you tell me anything about being careful about that? Yes, I did. Tell the court what you mean by be careful about that. Uh, it should be, you know, up to him to get up. It could be dangerous for him. And do you, did he ever indicate to you that he patrolled his area with an AK-47? This no. He never told you that? No. We'll withdraw that kind of question, Your Honor. That won't be asked, but... First part clearly is 404B. We motioned this in a pretrial motion. This is clearly uh, indicative of a, of a pattern by the defendant here. This purely relates to this incident, shooting at people heading south on his property, shooting in the air, shooting his weapon in the air, similar to what's going on here. And I think we already pretty extensively briefed the issue, so we're just sticking with our objection. We'll see it again here in open court. It's very long ago in time that this is alleged to have taken place. It's not clear. We can tell from the witness that he had a conversation with Mr. Kelly about this. It's not clear when the incident actually took place that Mr. Kelly is allegedly talking about. And it's not clear, again, how many shots. It's not clear if people were armed or not armed. And this witness just doesn't know. There's insufficient information for that to be probative. And we think the prejudicial effect outweighs the probative value of that evidence and that it could be used as propensity, which is not permissible. So for those reasons, we object. So, thank you. It's unclear to the court what the foundation is, what there's foundation as to not when the telephone call occurred, when the conversation occurred, but when the subject alleged incident occurred. That's, that's important to the court's analysis on the court. Well, let me ask, Mr. Wisdom, did Mr. Kelly give you any indication of when this happened in time? Uh, I don't know if it happened that day. Was it close in proximate time to when he called you? Yes. So it was close in time to the phone call? Right. And I don't think there's foundation for that. I mean, the witness was pretty agreeable, but how does one of our dear witnesses? You're saying that Mr. You and Mr. Kelly had a conversation, and that was what you said that conversation took place two or three years ago. Is that what you said? Yes. And in the conversation, Mr. Kelly told you something about firing a weapon into the air, right? right. Did he tell you when he fired that weapon into the air? No. Did he give you any information about when that took place at all? No. I so think it was that day he called me. What you think it was that day? Did right. Mr. Kelly tell you it was that day? Well, I figured it was that day. 
told me to go check my fences to make sure they didn't get cut. So that's the only reason you have to believe that that took place on that day? Yes, ma'am. Clearly, Your Honor, he's indicating the time, proximity, that he when he received the phone call. Mr. Kelly tells him to go check his fence lines, so that gives you also an inference that happened on that day, hence the phone call to Mr. Wisdom. Uh, this, um, this issue is governed by Rule 404B of the Arizona Rules of Evidence, which provides the subsection 1, except as otherwise provided in Rule 404C, evidence of other crimes, wrongs, or acts is not Admissible to, to prove the character of a person in order to show action in conformity therewith. Subsection 2, permitted uses. This evidence, however, may be admissible for other purposes, such as proof of motive, opportunity, intent, preparation, plan, knowledge, identity, or absence of mistake or accident. Um, the court is mindful that we had, we've had hearings on uh, these conversations and related conversations, some of which are memorialized in text messages. I ruled on the text messages. I ruled that some of those text messages are admissible, but I did it on the basis primarily uh, that it showed a preparation by the defendant for what is alleged to have occurred in this case. And all those text messages that the court allowed to be, and will allow to be uh, introduced with proper foundation are very proximate in time to the uh, alleged event in this case within days or within, I think, 30 days or so probably less. The court admitted, uh, would admit those text messages on the basis that it would tend to show and be probative of the defendant's preparation uh, for the events that occurred, but also mindful, of course, of Rule 403. These incidents are alleged to have occurred about two or three years prior to this alleged incident, so the basis upon which the court admitted those other text messages is not present here. It's can't show preparation for this doesn't tend to strongly show preparation for what's alleged to have occurred here because it happened two or three years prior. Um, it's prejudicial in that it really what it tends to show, um, and what the court infers it is being offered to show, is that this defendant has a propensity for violence and willing to use violence on his property, even his sister one. Also under Rule 403, Court excludes this evidence, finding that its probative value, um, which is minimal given the given the lack of proximity in time to the events that occurred. The court may exclude relevant evidence if its probative value is substantially outweighed by the danger of one or more of the following unfair prejudice, confusing the issues, misleading the jury, undue delay, wasting time, and needlessly presenting cumulative evidence. I think this evidence would tend to be used by the jury to show. If they, if they would use it for such, but they would use it to try to infer that uh, Mr. Kelsey has, Mr. Kelly has a certain propensity uh, for being willing to use violence in these situations, and that's the proper use. I appreciate it very much, Mr. Jay, for bringing this to the court's attention and highly pleasant to the jury. And for that reason, the uh, objection is sustained. If we'll bring back to the jury.
Ladies and gentlemen, please have a seat. We resolve the issue. We're ready to go forward. Um, Mr. Jetty, whenever you're ready. Mr. Wisdom, um, I think I forgot to ask you, how big is your property? About maybe 2,000 acres. 2,000. Do you have it's a big piece of property? Do you have any hands, any help? I have friends that help me out. Okay. And that's for your 36 cows, gray, 36 head graves. It's on your 2,000 acres? Uh, yes. Let me ask you, uh, do you patrol your area? Do you walk your 2,000 acres? No. ATV, horseback? Yes. Right on horseback. Do you go out on your property, though, often? Yes. And do you carry any weapons when you go out? No. You don't carry any guns? No, sir. You, are you afraid? I just don't take them with me. And I, this is always a personal question, Mr. Wisdom, but can I just ask you how old you are? 73. 73. And in your time, have you always owned that 2,000 acres? I mean, I don't own it, I lease it. Lease it. And how long have you been in that area leasing 2,000 acres? 19 years. 19 years. So do you see a lot of people coming on your property? No, not really. I'm talking about migrants from Mexico. No. I used to see them quite often, but not so much anymore. How, when did that stop? Do you know? I don't know. Okay. And when they came on your property, were you afraid? I just go the other way. Go the other way? I do. Do you call in? Do you report it? Pardon? Do you report it, seeing people on your property? I have. And you report that to which agency? Border Patrol. Border Patrol. Have you ever, for you, have you ever used a weapon to scare anyone off your property? No. Why wouldn't you do that? Why would I? Why wouldn't you? Objection, relevance. That's other questions I have, Your Honor. Cross examination. You lease property that is, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. The property that you lease, is that at least some of it adjacent to Mr. Kelly's property? Yes. And you know Mr. Kelly, and you've known him for a long time, right? Yes. And you've known his wife, Wanda, for a long time also, right? Yes. Okay. And does Mr. Kelly sometimes contact you to let you know that fences have been cut? No, not usually. No. Does he sometimes let you know that fences have been cut? No. He doesn't, he doesn't let you know about fences being cut? No. Okay. Have your fences ever been cut? Oh, yes. Um, how frequently? Is that something that happens pretty often out there? It used to happen more than it does now. Okay. And when your fences do get cut, that can cause problems because your cattle can get out, right? Right. And then you have to go out and make repairs to your fences, correct? Right. And so is it pretty standard for you to check on your fences? Pretty regularly? Uh, usually, if I see some cows that are out that are up there in the village in Kino Springs, then I will check to see if they get taken care of. Okay. And it wouldn't be unusual for somebody, maybe who has a smaller piece of property, to go check on fences pretty regularly, right? Yes. To make sure that they haven't been cut, right? Right. And I think we want to, want to just make it clear, you don't live on this property that you're leasing, is that no. correct? No. So Mr. Kelly lives out there, right? Yes. You lease property that's adjacent to Mr. Kelly, right? Yes. And you live somewhere else, right? Right. Do you live near Kino Springs or more near Rio Rico? Kino Springs. Kino Springs, but near the Little Red Schoolhouse? Right. Okay. Have you ever seen people um, on your property, illegal aliens on your property? That's something you've seen, correct? Yes. And 
I'm assuming most of the people you see probably don't have weapons, correct? I've seen them with weapons. Most of them probably don't, right? Yeah. You have seen people with weapons, correct? Yes. How often have you seen people with weapons on your property? Uh, several times. Several times? Um, how big of a group did you see on your property on those several times when you saw people with weapons? How big of a what? Of a group. How many people did you see? Um, it could be three to ten to twelve people. You've seen groups from three to ten to twelve people on your property? Yes. And those groups that you've observed you've seen some of those people to be carrying weapons? Yes, I've seen weapons. What kind of weapons did you see, if you I can tell? I don't know what they were. Were they rifles or handguns? Rifles. Rifles? And you've seen that on at least three different occasions? Yes. OK. Um, did you observe anything else about these groups who were carrying rifles on your property? No. Were they carrying anything else? They had backpacks. Were they large backpacks? Yes. Okay. And were these men in these groups that you observed? Pardon me? Men you saw in the groups? Men? Were they men? Yes. yes. Okay. I figured they were probably carrying drugs. And why did you figure they were probably carrying drugs? They, they wouldn't have no other reason to be going through there. Right. Carrying backpacks. Were they wearing camouflage? Do you recall? <coughs> uh, I've seen them camouflage, but most of the time dressed in black. You normally see groups dressed in black when you see people carrying rifles. Could you tell, and if you can't tell, let us know, but were you able to tell how many members in the group had rifles? Was it all of them, some of them, or something different? Uh, I don't think all of them were carrying rifles. You don't think all of them carried no. rifles? Like I said, if I saw them like that, I'd turn around and I'd go a different direction. Makes sense. Those groups, when you did encounter, have those several encounters that you're talking about, were you out um, by yourself on that property? Yes. In a vehicle or on foot or on horseback? Vehicle. Vehicle? And on horseback. So on different occasions, you've been out there either in a vehicle or on horseback, and you've seen groups of armed Men. That's what he said before. So he didn't need to ask Sorry. another question. When you say they're wearing black, were all members of the group wearing black to your recollection? That I can remember, yes. Okay. Did you report these instances to Border Patrol? When yes. You, those three instances you reported to Border Patrol? Right. Do you recall how quickly Border Patrol was able to respond? Fairly quickly. How quick is fairly quickly? Within 10, 15, 20 minutes. OK, so 10 to 20 minutes. Were they able to apprehend any of these people, as far as you are aware? Uh, I'm not aware if they apprehended them or not. OK. I don't have any other questions. Be direct. Mr. Wisdom, you talked about backpacks. You saw backpacks. How far back in time was that? How long ago? Uh, it's been a couple years. A little while ago, right? Yeah. When we're talking about backpacks, are we talking about the ones that kids wear to school, or are we talking about a different size backpack? Bigger backpack. Can you like describe what, what a backpack that looks like? I'd say it's probably about two feet long, maybe a couple of feet wide. Pretty substantial. Yeah. And you said the people you saw with those kind of backpacks, and some of them had weapons. I think that was your testimony. They were all wearing black. Yes. I didn't ask you this, but do you see Mr. Kelly in the courtroom today? Yes. Where is he sitting? Over there, behind me. Behind me, right behind me. Um, is he sitting at the defense counsel table? Yes. Your Honor, can the record reflect uh, the witnesses identified Mr. Kelly? So ordered. That's all the questions I have, Your Honor. Thank you. Any questions for this witness from any of the jurors? Seeing none, I think.
this witness be excused? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. We're excused. Thank you, Your Honor. State calls the next witness. State calls uh, Deputy Monreal. Good morning. Could you please tell the jury your full name and spell your last name for the court reporter? Good morning. My first name is David. Last name is Montreal. M O N R E A L. Additional Fabian. F A B I A N. And are you a deputy with the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Department? Yes, I'm a deputy with the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office. My badge number is 191. And Deputy Monreal, how long have you been with the Sheriff's Department? I've been employed with the Sheriff's Office for over six years. And could you tell us, have you spent your whole career at the Sheriff's Department? My whole career has been with the Sheriff's Department. It's been five years, consisted of a detention center. Maybe five years, and the year and a half approximately has been with the deputy side. So you were a detention officer in our jail here for five years, and then for a year and a half you've been a deputy. Yes, correct. Could you just tell the jury a little bit about your training and experience? My training experience, when I started a detention, it was back in 2017, June 24th. I said I was went to the academy, which is Code Academy in Tucson, graduated from the academy. I then spent those five years at the Chen Center where I was going to trainings, various trainings on how to deal with inmates, interact with people. Then was also a supervisor in the, the year of 2019. I became a corporal supervisor where I would have more training. I was sent to trainings for how to communicate with staff. Um, then after that, I became an interim sergeant for the year of 2021. After that, I went to the academy for the deputy patrol side. I went to the academy in uh, 2022. I went to the academy of June 25th. July 25th of 2022, I went to the academy in uh, Cochise County, where I graduated December 8th of 2022, where various trainings from defensive tactics, interacting with people, domestic violence, how to interact, how to talk. And from there, the training, when I graduated, I was placed in a three-month training here at the Sheriff's Office with different trainers where it became two weeks, four weeks, four weeks, and then two weeks as well. I was trained by three different officers during the course when this incident happened. Was your training complete or were you still on training at the time of this incident? <clears throat> I was still in training. It was my phase three. It was phase three, approximately. I was in the streets two to four, seven to eight weeks. I was still in training. And so on January 30th of 2023, who was your field training officer? My field training officer was Deputy Arlette Cabrera, special number 139. And when you're on your field training, does that deputy, um, that field training officer, do they shadow you the whole time? The whole time, she's always next to me. I cannot leave her side. If there's a call that I'm responding to, she's next to me. I cannot leave her side. She's, not, she's always there to me. And were you riding together in a vehicle? Yes, we were riding together. Now, 
on January 30th of 2023, did you and your field training officer get dispatched to a call? Yes, we did. And was that at um, 100 Willow Cross Circle? Yes, correct. Do you know what time you were dispatched to that call? Talking about approximately 1447 hours. And what time is that in non-military regular people time? 2.47 p.m. So you got dispatched at 2.47. Do you know where you all were when you got dispatched? We were here at the at the Sheriff's Office, 2170 North Congress Drive. And when the call was dispatched, um, there are calls that you go to that you turn on your lights and sirens, and then there are calls that you don't go to, don't turn on your lights and sirens. Can you tell us what the difference is? <clears throat> right, so the difference is our dispatch could dispatch to any call, such as we need help, we need assistance, you will keep the peace. It could be any call that is thrown over the radio, and we'll just respond normal traffic, you know, driving normally. But when there is an emergency alert tone, it's an approximate two to three second sound, which is kind of, you can't forget that sound, a little beep in the radio, and it makes me just, you know, remain silent, listen to the radio, pay attention to what they're gonna tell you and what's going on. Once we hear that and we know where we're going, we activate our lights and sirens. That's usually when we also drive over a speed limit, just pay attention to traffic and what's going on and go to that emergency. So was this a toned out call or was this a regular call? It was a toned out call. And so when you got the call, I'm assuming you turned on your lights and sirens and sped to the location, is that right? That's correct. Yes. All right. Were you driving or was Deputy Cabrera? I was driving. And when you when you got toned out to the call, um, how long do you think it took you to get out there to Kino Springs? Do not recall, but approximately at least 20, 30 minutes from okay. here from the sheriff's office. When you got there, what did you observe? When I arrived there, what I observed first was two Border Patrol agents standing at the gate. Were you and Deputy Cabrera the first Sheriff's Department officers to respond? Yes, correct. Also, as well, was... Sergeant Julia Garcia, batch number 130, and as well, Deputy Castanea, Cristobal Castanea, batch number 144. Did they arrive at a similar time to you, or, I mean, were you together? How did that work out, if you remember? They were right behind us. Were there any other deputies other than the four of you? No. When the four of you arrived and you saw the Border Patrol agents, where were the Border Patrol agents stationed when you got there? When I got there, they were right at the gate of the entrance of the residence. <coughs> were they on the inside or outside? They were outside of the residence gate. So not on the property, just outside the property? Yes, we right outside the property. Once you arrived and you saw them there, what did y'all do? Once we arrived, we, first of all, we came out of our units with our long rifles. All of our deputies had done our AR rifles, which is issued by the county. Why did you have your rifles? We had our rifles due to the fact the call came out that there were shots fired in the area. We were not knowing what was really going on other than shots fired in the area. So anytime there's a shots fired call, you're, that's how you're going to respond with your <coughs> rifles? Yes. Do you take those kind of calls seriously? Yes. Do you get those calls a lot? No. You don't get shots fired calls very often? It's not very often since I've been out here. And when you when you um, got out got out of the vehicle with your rifles, did you what did you do with the with the Border Patrol agents? I approached the Border Patrol agents and they briefed me on a little bit of what was going on, what they knew about. And after you had that briefing, what did y'all do? After we had that briefing, that's when we decided to Starting to search the area. When you say search the area, what were you looking for? We're looking at the point at that time we're looking for any threats <coughs> and as well for Mr. Kelly due to the fact that Border Patrol agents had told us he had left uh, searching for himself. So I there's something called a security sweep and then there's an actual search. Would you describe this as a security sweep or a search at this point? It was a search, basically. A search your what are you looking for? Just looking for uh, any subjects that have weapons, because at that time, uh, Border Patrol had told us there were armed subjects. So isn't that what a security sweep is? Aren't you looking for a object danger? 
state. That's what we're looking for. Let me ask it again. Presentation is the same. Sure. I'll ask it in a different way. Um, a security sweep. What does a security sweep entail? Well, security sweep tells basically look as general as much as we can. See where we're trying to um, look. We're not looking in under every rock. Basically, we're moving every pebble we could find before. Okay, but what are you looking for? We're looking for any threat, any immediate threat. Since there were shots fired, we're looking for someone. So this, this. Um, what you refer to as a search, were you looking under every rock when you were doing this, what you refer to as a search? We're looking as much where someone could hide or be or place themselves as a human being could hide behind or move around. And were you looking for them for a reason? We're looking for the reason of just shots fired and as the reason of they were possibly armed. Okay. Did you describe this in your report um, in some way? The search? Yes. Uh, I don't recall if I described it. I do believe it, the cursory search of the area. Cursory search? Yeah. Is that how you would describe it as a cursory search? Yes. Can you tell me, I'm going to show you what's been admitted. As Exhibit 114. Do you recognize that? Yes. This has already been admitted. Can we publish it? It's not coming up. Oh, it's over there, but just not up here. Okay. Oh, good. All right. Um, sorry, I was waiting for that to come up on the TV screen over here. So, pardon me. So. Can I go on? Thank you. So, um, can you tell us what we're looking at in States Exhibit 114? Yes, we're looking at a basically a Google map picture from the residence. And when you say the residence, is that the Kelly residence? Yes, correct. And I'm going to zoom it in just a little bit. on this map the area where you came in through the gate? Yes. And can you show us if you touch on the screen in the upper left hand corner with that stylus that's in front of you? If you touch the upper right hand corner it'll give you a color. And then if you circle the area where the, where <coughs> the gates are located. Just to the north of that area on the map, do you see a different um, something in that area? Yes. Is it possible that the gates are a little bit uh, further north? Yes. Okay. So if, uh, let me just undo that for you. Can you show? Can you circle now where the where the gates are located? What did you do when you chatted with Border Patrol? Um, you said there you were on the other side of the gates. How did you get into the property? At that point, we then got off our vehicle and we opened the gate. Okay, was the gate unlocked? They had a chain, I believe. And what did you do with the chain? Just took it off, opened it, and opened the, 
Okay. So was it just wrapped, the chain, or was it locked? At that point, it didn't have a lock. It was just wrapped around. Okay. And so you opened the gate at that point. Did you all drive in? No. At that point, we just started walking in. Okay. And when you walked in, what did you all do? When we walked, we walked straight um, towards the residence through the road. Okay. And so I see a dirt path on the on the map that's on the screen. Is that the dirt road you followed? Yes, correct. It's going to be this road. And what did you do after you followed the dirt road? Where did y'all go? We went towards back of the residence, uh, towards this side, due to the fact we couldn't find a way, the fencing uh, we had. We are trying to wait to jump the fence or go under the fence. So there was actually a fence behind the house? Yes, correct. And the area where the magenta yes. line is that you just drew? Okay. And what did you find as you walked along the fence line? Uh, we were going to find which looked like the ladder that was placed to be able to jump the fence, which was located behind this structure. So the ladder should be located around this area. And when you say a ladder, could you describe what that ladder structure was like over the barbed wire fence? Just the ladder, by the four or six feet ladder that was placed on top of the fence. Then it had another part going down on the other side. So it's just two regular ladders? along the fence line or or is it one ladder with two pieces do you recall do not recall but it was a ladder on somehow there was a ladder structure on each side of the fence right and what did y'all do uh, when did were you all four together at this point at this point we were since we were able to find that access to go over the fence and all four went over the ladders over the fence and how large was the area that was fenced in in that area do you recall? Do not recall. But... Did you search inside the fence line or did you go outside that fence line? We went outside the fence line. Once we jumped that ladder, we located another fence where we did have to go under the fence. Okay. And so you actually went under the other fence? The second fence. Did you all go together? Did you split up? What did you do when you were in this area? Once we went under the second fence, we started to divide ourselves a little bit wider. Try to divide and see what we could see. I did have to say with Deputy Cabrera, I could not leave her side. So it was mostly three searching part. So the two of you went one way and the other two deputies went off in other directions? That's correct. Do you know what direction you and Deputy Cabrera went? At this point, we're more of the east and then south style this way. Did you, do you recall if you came to, the, to a dirt road? Did you go as far as the dirt road? Yes. You did. Did you go past the dirt road? Or did um, you just go to the dirt road? We went down to the wash that is located down here in this area. Okay. Into the wash. After the wash, we hit this dirt road. Okay. And when? how did you get from where you were to the down to the wash? Where we were, we just started walking east to the depth of this search. So you went east and then south? And do you know what the other deputies did? If you know. I do not recall they were to my left, so probably a little bit up more than around the same area. They were to your left? They were to my left, right. Okay, so if you're walking east, then that would put them north of you? A little bit, not uh, very far. Away. Okay, and so, and so you think you all hiked around down to the wash? Did you all go that direction, or did they go different directions? No, it was basically most of the same direction, just a little white spread of feet apart. Okay. And then when you came down to the wash, did you discover anything? No, I did not discover anything. What was the brush like? Do you remember? It was medium-sized, dry, um, probably knee-high. If anybody, if anything had been laying in the brush, or... Um, hiding in the brush, would you have seen it if you were not right on top of it? I'm object to object to um, wind. Overall. No, the point was no, we're not searching really low. You weren't searching low, but if someone had been hiding in it, would you have been able to see them? No, honestly, no. At any point, did you see any sign that there had been large groups of people through that area? No. Did you see any sign of anything? Not at the moment. Okay. 
And then you said you hiked down into the wash. Did you see anything in the in the wash? And then you said you hiked over to the dirt road. Is that right? Yes. Is that like a driveway for the Kelly property? <clears throat> it's like a two track driveway or a two. And what did you do when you got to that driveway? Once well, we went to that driveway, uh, we decided to go back myself to Rio Cabrera. We decided to go back to the residence, see if we could speak with Ms. Kelly, see if she had been in contact with uh, Mr. Kelly, either telephone or he probably made it back to the residence. And without telling us um, what she said, did you all talk to Mrs. Kelly? Yes. And then what did you do after you talked to Mrs. Kelly? After we talked with Ms. Kelly, we then got back into our fully marked patrol unit, myself and Deputy Cabrera, and drove down to the two track we had came walking back to the residence. And did you encounter anyone? Once we drove down the two track later on, we encountered a Sergeant Yuya Garcia. And did uh, Sergeant Garcia tell you that she heard something? Yes, Sergeant Yuya Garcia stated that she had her uh, canine uh, down the, the two track and to make herself drive down there to see if we could locate Mr. Kelly or the canines he was with at the time. Sergeant Garcia was your supervisor on that occasion, is that right? Yes, she was. And so you, she directed you to head on down the driveway to see if you could find the dogs and Mr. Kelly? Yes. And did you do that? Yes, we did. And what did you observe when you drove down the Road. When I started driving down the road, I then observed the Border Patrol agents walking up the dirt road along with Mr. Kelly. Did you see anything else with Mr. Kelly? Uh, Mr. Kelly was carrying, well, he had his canines and then he also was carrying a long rifle on his right arm. You said his canines, his, his dogs, how many dogs? Yeah, that I recall, I remember one, like two. You just recall one dog? Yes. Okay. And you said he was carrying something else with him? What yes. else was he carrying? He was carrying a long rifle, an AK-47. And how was he carrying that? He was carrying by the stock, the back part of the weapon, and the muscle was pointing behind him. And I see you pointing to your right shoulder. Is that the way that he was carrying it, over his right shoulder? Yes, correct. And did you document in your report which arm he was carrying it on? I don't recall if I document which arm it was. If I showed you a copy of your report, would that refresh your recollection? Yes. Yeah, for sure. with him mark the state to get at 1.6 is that a copy of your report yes could you take a look and see if that refreshes your recollection Yes. Did you document it? Yes, I did. And what, what did you document? I documented the, the long rifle was on his right arm, right hand. Did you know what the what the long arm was? Did you know any details about it? Uh, the details that really stand out to me was it had an approximate three or four in length 
inch uh, flashlight with an orange button. It was on the right side of the firearm, long rifle, by the barrel. It was, what really stands out to me was orange button and that it was being held with something that looked like black duct tape. Did you notice what kind of weapon it was? Notice it was, appeared to be an AK-47. Did you note anything about the, the stock or the grip? The stock and the grip was a dark in color wood grip, handle, and stock. And did you notice and anything about the metal? The metal I could see is worn out, a light charcoal gray color. After you made those observations, um, did you did you talk to Mr. Kelly while you were there on the road? Yes, sir. And do you see Mr. Kelly here in the courtroom? Yes. Would you describe what he's wearing and where he's sitting for the court, please? He's wearing a long sleeve, square blue, light blue shirt. He's wearing a Levi's jacket, vest. Before I move on from the weapon, did you know anything about whether the AK-47 had a strap or not? Do not recall. You don't remember. And when you chatted with Mr. Kelly, what is it that he told you happened that day? He said that day when I spoke to Mr. Kelly was that he had a, heard a gunshot. Did he tell you where he was, first of all? He was standing by the kitchen island in his residence. By his kitchen island? Yes. And what did he tell you he observed? Um, where, where did he observe something through? When he, was, when he was standing by the kitchen island, he observed through his living room window uh, he had observed those five subjects, possibly wearing backpacks, camouflage, and possibly wearing, uh, carrying rifles. Did he tell you whether they were running or walking? That they were running south, and he had also seen his horse was running back and forth in distress. So he said they were, there were five subjects. He saw them from the kitchen through the living room window, and he saw five subjects running south. Does that accurately summarize that part of the statement you just told me? Yes. And then, did he say if he heard anything? He did say he had heard one gunshot. What did he say he saw when he heard the gunshot? He saw all those subjects running south. And did he see anything else with respect to his horse? And his horse running back and forth, startled. And did he... Did you um, indicate that he said his horse was in distress? Yes. Does that accurately summarize that part of Mr. Kelly's statement? Yes. What did he say he did after he made those observations? After he made those observations, he stated he went um, to his front door where he has in the AK-47 and he grabbed it and walked outside. What did he say about the AK-47 and where he keeps it? He then made the comment when he was grabbing the AK-47 of his baby's always by the door. Okay, does that accurately summarize what Mr. Kelly told you? Yes. And you said that, that he went outside, is that right? Yes, correct. Did he tell you which door he exited? The main, by the living room, room door, where the gun was. So is that on the... So be on the north side, the east side, south side. South side of the residence. Okay. So that house is sort of at an angle, right? Right. So the south side, is that also like southeast? The southeast patio door? Yeah. Let's go back to the map. So if this is north-south on the, on the property, let me zoom in for you. Can you point um, on with using the map, using the pointer, which which side of the house you believe that was? Was there a pergola out that direction? Was there a pergola on the side of the area where you thought he came out of the house, or was it the other side of the house? Do you know what a pergola is? Gazebo. Mm -hmm. Gazebo. Do not recall. 
if you don't remember. And so the area where you've just drawn the map, it looks like there's a, a wall around it, and that's where the front door is. Is that where you think he came out? Yes. You think he told you he came out the front door? And did he say what he did after he came outside? After he came outside, he just said that he followed, followed them with his canines. And he said a minute ago that he saw the subjects and what did he tell you they were, what did he tell you about what he observed? He observed the subjects that they were wearing camouflage, also backpacks and some were carrying rifles. Did he say they were carrying rifles or did he say they were something else? They were carrying rifles. And does your report document that they were carrying rifles or that he told you they were possibly carrying rifles? The report does say I stated possibly. And which is accurate? Possibly is accurate. Yeah. So he told you that he exited the residence, he saw the subjects and they were possibly carrying rifles. That's correct. And you said you also remember him saying that they were carrying backpacks, is that right? Yes. And did you say camouflage? Yes, correct. Did you have information that somehow there were reports of shots fired? Well, the information of shots fired was the one when it came over the radio. It got dispatched out that way? Correct. And so did you ask him about that? Didn't ask him directly of what the shots or Did you ask him if the subject shot at him? I did ask him what he had heard and what the shot if they had shot at him. Correct. And how did he respond? He responded that he did not know of what direction they were shooting or if they had met other cartel members and they were doing a shootout. Okay, so let's stop with the direction first. He told you he didn't know what direction they shot, is that right? That's correct. So does that accurately summarize what he, what he said to you? Yes. And then you said, he said something about a shootout. Can you, can you tell me what that was about? It was about, he didn't know if the reason why they were running or the shot was fired, if it was another rival cartel members. Had, had a conflict between each other. Have you ever seen that happen in Kino Springs? No. And so he said he thought they encountered another cartel and what did he say he thought happened? He did believe that there were just cartel members, rivals that shot at each other and they just started running south. And did he say that he thought they were scared from the shots? Yes. Does that accurately summarize what he told you? Yes. Okay. What did he tell you he did after he made those observations? After he made those observations, that's when he just started following, tried to follow the subject south with his canines. And did he tell you how many canines or dogs he had with him? I don't recall. You don't remember if you documented that in your report? Yeah. If I showed you your report, would that refresh your recollection? Yes. Is it still in front of you? Yes. Could you take a look? What did he say he observed? He didn't observe it. He didn't see him anymore. He wasn't able to have visual of them. He stated they probably made a south and wasn't able to see him. So he said he never saw them again after he followed them with his dogs. Correct. And he said they made it south. You don't need to repeat every time. This is to all counsel, okay? Because you're all here. You don't need to repeat every time what the witness has just testified to as a preface to those questions. Ask those questions. All right, it's not directed just at this moment. On the practice, it takes a time, it's a waste of time. Just ask those questions. Did he tell you where he thought they made it back to? 
XL serves Mexico's border. Does that accurately summarize what he told you? Yes. Now, after you had this conversation with Mr. Kelly, did you tell did you talk to him about another officer? I did inform him that Deputy Cristobal Castaneda Bashamon won't report her duty, so I apologize. It's all right. You have people get up there, they get a little nervous, really understandable, especially under the circumstances. They don't really want to talk to the boss until talking to the bar director. Okay. <laughs> but uh, so just try to slow it down. Are you okay? I did uh, tell him that Deputy Cristobal Castaneda, batch number 144, would be the main officer of the case, and he would be speaking with him. So Castaneda was the main officer, is that what you said? I'm yes. sorry, I'm having a little trouble hearing you. That's why I'm kind of repeating what you're saying, so I'm sure I have it. Yes, he was a main officer. Okay, and so you told you told George he was going to talk to him? Yes. And after you told him that, did you... What did you do next? After that, myself and the brief, um, Cabrera Padres got in our unit. That's when I asked Mr. Kelly if he needed a ride back to the residence. And what did he say? He stated no, that he was going to walk back with his two canines. At some point later, were you contacted? Does that end your investigation in this case? Yes, at that day it was. The next day, were you contacted by the Criminal Investigation Division? Yes, I was the following day. And when you were contacted by them, uh, what did they ask you to do? They asked me if I could describe the weapon, or if I could identify the weapon that Mr. Kelly was carrying the day, on 30th. Did you go and look at a weapon? Yes, I went to the, here to the Sheriff's Office, to the Criminal Investigation Division Office, where they showed me a weapon. And was it the right weapon? No, it was not. And do you remember what time that was? I do not recall the time. Would your would your report reflect what time? Yes. Do you want to take a look? During the day, we were asked by the Criminal Investigations Division to assist them in searching the residence for the weapon. What time did you go out to assist with that search warrant? Do not recall the exact time. Would it help if you looked at your report? Yes. It was at 11 a.m. in the morning. And when you got out there at 11 a.m., did you take a look at, did they ask you to look at a different weapon? Yes, I was asked to look at a different weapon. And where was that weapon? That weapon was located in a room. It was found by Detective Sergeant Flores. It was located behind a door to a room, under, beneath a coat. And when you looked at that weapon, what did you discover? When I discovered I saw that weapon, I realized it was the same weapon I had seen Mr. Kelly carrying the day before. And could I, um, I need to show the witness a picture. show you an image um, state exhibit 34 and it's image number 4636 do you recognize that item yes and what does that item appear to be the item appears to be an AK-47 the weapon I had seen Mr. Kelly carrying the, the day before is that the item you identified as the AK-47 that Mr. Kelly was carrying on January 30th of 2023? Yes, so it's. We're going to move for admission of image number 4636 in 
know, I'm trying to try to deal with it. So what's the exhibit? 34, Your Honor. Image number 4636. It's one item and exhibit 34. Image 4636. I'm sorry, this is not tracking again. I'm just trying to see if I can track so I can call it up by the number. But let me just get clarity if I may. This is evidence number 34. Exhibit 34, correct. Photo of Rachel Black. Correct. Image number 4636. For this photo, Mark M. 34, I would have no objection. Okay, so this is one page from, as I understand it, photo exhibit exhibit 34. Without objection, page number 4636 and exhibit 34. And is that the weapon that you observed? Yes, it was. That's the AK-47 Mr. Kelly was handling? Yes. I'm going to show you another image. This is 4637. In the same yeah. page. Same page. Do you recognize that item? Yes. And what is that item? That's the AK-47 Mr. Kelly was carrying. Is that the other side of it? Yes, correct. Move for admission of exhibit 34, item number, image 4637. No objection. Page 4637 from exhibit 34 is in there. And is that the other side of the weapon? Yes, correct. I'm gonna, Your Honor, I'm going to ask the um, detective to show the witness the weapon, which we have in evidence. Just so you know, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, uh, I've ordered and had this uh, particular item of evidence, this weapon, uh, double checked and triple checked, just to make sure it has no live ammunition in it. So, I'm sure that it's completely safe for display. Detective Isaac, could you please show the weapon to the witness? Exhibit 10, states Exhibit 101, and please don't sh do it so that it doesn't show. Shown to the jury. Deputy Monreal, do you recognize that item? Yes. And what is that item? It's the AK 47 Mr. Kelly was carrying on January 30th. Gunner moved for admission of State's Exhibit 101. I'm not 
not sure what exchange is happening, but if there's some kind of question, we need to have it on the record. And if counsel is touching things, she needs to put on a pair of gloves. Have a discussion sidebar about. Um... Right, let's do this. Um... move for admission of state's exhibit 101 and if council will check your exhibit list that we uh, emailed you this morning it's on there your honor could the detective display this for the jury please detective is displaying that um, for the jury is there also inside the box the black electrical tape and the um, flashlight that you observed that were on the flashlight yes correct so that's just the box turn around. 
pronounce it in the way that you see it. And Deputy Monreal, when you looked in the box, was there also a... Uh, sorry to interrupt. Sure. So for obvious reasons, oh, this has been admitted into evidence. For obvious reasons, we don't intend to send this back with you to the jury room, as we will with all the other exhibits. If you really need to see it, we may do it. But take, a good, if you take whatever link you need to use right now or have right now to make sure you have a familiar with the exhibit, because it might not be available to you. Uh, Judge, I think once and get a better look, so if you could move a little, maybe a little. Closer. You have a question about the uh, the problem viewing the exhibit? Well, hold on a second. Yeah. What's the what's the issue? Your Honor, what's your proper to ask the question regarding uh, an attachment? <coughs> I'm sorry, an attachment that was uh, added on to the question for the double or whatever. You you and the other jurors will be allowed to ask questions at the close of the witnesses' Thank testimony. You. So write it down so you don't forget. Has everyone had a chance to look at the weapon the way you want to? Yes, um, yes Jordan, what's that? I would like to see some actual measurements of the weapon. All right, put that in a question, and uh, we'll see if we can address it then. Put it away. Yeah. Everybody there? All right, can you put it away? Are you done with the uh, exhibit? I'm not, Your Honor. I just need to show the electrical tape and the flashlight. Okay. Deputy, you Thanks also mentioned you electrical you tape and a flashlight. You also mentioned electrical tape and a flashlight. Is that also contained in the box? Yes, correct. Is that the electrical tape and the flashlight you saw on the weapon in the way that it is shown in the photographs? Yes, it is. Could you um, hold that up just so that the jury can see it, please? The bag? The bag, please. No, no, the, the tape and the flashlight. Can you flip it around? Detective Ayesa, could you maybe display that for the jury? I think some folks down here on the other end are having trouble seeing it. Yeah, maybe pause right here because I'm not sure what's in that little book. Yeah, why don't you uh, go to the next table? We're going into the lunch hour a little bit, but I would just prefer to finish this so we can put this stuff away. Sorry about that. Can we go on the headset, Jordan? All right. Let's, uh, let's recess for lunch. Uh, but we'll send the jury out. We'll stay here and keep working on any issues. You're excused for lunch. Remember the admission of the court. We're going to recommence at 1.30 this afternoon. Please be back in the jury room slightly before 1.30. Yeah. Goodbye, Jim Fuller. Records show that the jury is absent, and um, this won't work. Everyone else got a seat. You got a seat. Stay or leave as you wish, but you can stay. Have a seat for the jury. Your Honor, the envelope is still in there. Just one is removed from the plastic bag, so it doesn't provoke a question what's in the envelope. We don't have it admitted yet because it's done with another witness, and it should be walked across to the jurors. What's in the envelope? The case. Your Honor, that's the casings I mentioned that you said not to worry about, so I wasn't going to worry about it. We have a good faith belief that the expert who shot the weapon is going to appear tomorrow and identify those casings. And that's all that's in the bag? Um, no, in the bag is the flashlight and the black electrical tape in addition to the, the casings. Right. And the envelope. So I, the casings is I... They're inside I an envelope. That's what I was just going to say. Yeah. That's what I thought. 
Can we take the envelope it, out and let them see the plastic bag? Is, they, is all the plastic it. bag sealed? I don't, I'm not sure. Let me see the plastic bag. I just need to see the plan. Well, plastic bag, you know. Yeah, see. Yeah. Right, okay, so the question I was asking was whether the seal would take to preserve the uh, integrity of, of the chain of custody of the evidence. I'm not seeing that on the plastic bag, so. Just take the other little bag, the little manila envelope that the casings are in, just take them out. I don't have a problem with that, Your Honor, as long as we put them back. The box itself was sealed until the court unsealed it to check the, for the, um, to make sure that the weapon was safe for the jury. So well, that so was the set integrity seal, just for the record. So, the, yeah, there's no integrity seal on this bag. Correct. So, so let's, you can, when you want to display it to the jury, you can just take the, sh the casings out, keep them separate. And then you can take the other things out of the bag. Even. Sounds yeah. fine. It'll be even better. How's that, Ms. Wolfram? That's that exactly what I was requesting. Now. All right. Done deal. Then um, it's five after twelve. We'll continue at one thirty after after lunch. And someone and you, can, you can reseal this up if you want. If, yeah. if uh, the detective could.
Roger, Pickle Boy. Thank you. Please be seated. Back on the record, the presence of all the jurors, counsel, and the defendant. And um, we left off with the state. So we have a witness. Governor, could Detective Aisa approach and unseal the box? Stand and when we're ready, we'll continue with the direct examination. Detective Ainsa has sealed and is now unsealing again um, after the break. Exhibit 101. And I've instructed him um, regarding the court order. I think uh, you were about to display the contents of the bag, is that right? Yes, Your Honor. With the court's permission, could you please show the witness the contents of the Ziploc bag? Detective, or I'm sorry, Deputy, could you tell us, um, do you recognize the items in the Ziploc bag and what's been admitted as Exhibit 101? Yes, I do. And what do those items appear to be? The flashlight and the black duct tape that was located in the AK-47. And when you saw it, the if I understood your testimony earlier, the flashlight was a, was affixed to the weapon, as you see in the photograph with the black electrical tape. Is that right? Yes, it was. Thank you. And with the court's permission, I'd like Detective my inside to show the witness Exhibit 102. Number? 102. Yeah. Do you recognize the item in the box marked Exhibit 102? Yes. And how do you recognize that? No, it's on the weapon. Um, and do you recognize it from the weapon that Mr. Kelly was carrying on January 30th? Yes. And is that the weapon that on January 31st you identified as the weapon he was carrying on January 30th? Yes, it was. Can I move for admission of State's Exhibit 102, which I believe is the magazine? Does it also contain other items inside the weapon? Is it just the magazine? It's just the magazine. Just the magazine. Well, and the rounds. Yeah, the rounds are and the rounds are in there too. Okay. Uh, are you take? Can I take this witness on board out? Yes. I don't believe this person has uh, knowledge that this is the same thing that came out again. So I'd like to correct, make some questions. Yes. Okay. Uh, so you can see the contents of this exhibit, correct? Yes. Did you personally take the rifle in your possession? No, I never had it in my possession. Okay, all you did was ID it back at the house? Yes. So you have no idea if this magazine is what came out of this rifle, correct? Correct. Okay, and you have no idea that any of these uh, bullets that might be from this magazine came from not only that magazine, but also from the rifle, correct? That's correct. And therefore, I object, Your Honor, for no personal knowledge. Deputy, did you see the magazine what? from out? I'll put this rule on the objection, then you can continue. Sorry, the Your Honor. The objection is sustained, and you can try it later. There's no problem. Did you see the magazine from the outside of the weapon? Yes, I did. And does what's in State's Exhibit 102 appear to be consistent with what you observed outside the weapon? Yes. 
And did you see um, officers collect that, uh, officers of the Criminal Investigation Division collect that evidence at the scene? Yes, I did. Okay. And who did you see collect it? It was Sergeant Flores, Detective Bunting as well was there, okay. Detective Ainsa. Okay, thank you. That's all, thank you. Four questions, Your Honor. Um, magazines are very common items, correct? Yes, they are. I mean, you can't look at one magazine and know for sure that it is the exact magazine of, Your Honor, of another. I didn't move to admit the exhibit. I just said thank you. That's oh. all I had. Oh. So I'll move to admit it with the detectives. Thank you. All right. So the objections moved. Very well. Thank you. We might have missed that. Did you pass the witness? I did, Judge. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I passed the witness cross examination. Thank you, Judge. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, you did some law enforcement work, but it was in the jail, correct? Yes, correct. Got some experience, moved up the ranks, and I assume you expressed an interest in wanting to learn how to do patrol, right? Yes, I did. Get out of the jail. Yes. And in order to do that, they sent you to the academy, correct? Yes, correct. And you went to more than one? So the academy for, <clears throat> I guess, for a deputy, it's just one academy for a deputy. Okay. And was that the last thing that you were describing or the first one that you were describing? You had different dates. That was the last one I was describing. Okay. So that's what allowed you to get certified in law enforcement to be able to perform police activities, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. And then you were going through different phases of probation, correct? Correct. And you broke it up into like three areas, four? Correct, there's four phases. Four phases. And you were on the last one? I was in phase three. Three. One before the last. Okay. So with that in mind, since leaving the academy, and being out on January 30th on the ride along uh, with your supervisor, how much time have you had a chance to do these ride alongs? Your Honor, objection to the form. This assumes that he was on a ride along, which is. Do you understand what I mean by that? I think you can ask a better question. Okay. Uh, it wasn't even clear whether the question is still clear. The question. When you're on probation, thank you, Judge. When you're on probation, when I meant right along, is that you had to be supervised with a senior officer, right? That's correct. Senior deputy. And so when you're riding along, meaning you're in a vehicle with someone else that's supervising you, correct? Correct. And you understood that, right? Yes. Okay. And so you, at this point in time, on January 30th, my question is, how long have you been out of the academy and started your probationary period riding along with other officers in each of the phases? Since so I graduated the academy, I graduated December 8th of 2022. After that, to January 30th, it should have been approximately seven to eight weeks. Okay. So to come up and tell the jurors that you've <clears throat> never seen things before, it's because you're new, right? There were some questions given by the state. Have you ever seen anything like this before, whether it's weapons or, or any type of activity that was um, dealing with, you know, transporting drugs and whatever, whatever the question was. You remember that? Yes, I do. Okay. 
and uh, and you answered no, you hadn't. But you were very brand new at this point in time, weren't you? Back in January 3rd, that was. Yes. So you can't use your wealth of experience on the job to know for sure what the terrain is like out there, correct? On that day, no. Okay. I mean, you're learning every day as you go, right? That's correct. And you've got another over another year under your belt, is that right? Yes. Since this incident. Okay. So, but this is good training, and you learned a lot from this case, I would imagine. Yes. So, when you get there, you're supposed to be in supervised distance um, with the person that's training you in this phase, phase three, right? Yes, correct. And again, who was that? That was Arlette Cabrera, badge number 139. Okay, you're good at badge numbers. You know everyone's badge number? Majority, almost everybody. That's pretty cool. Okay, and... But Cabrera. Yes. Okay. And so when you get there, in order to go out into this field to do this search, you had to know why or what you were looking for, right? Yes. Okay. Did anyone gather information first besides dispatch information that would make you to know what direction to start looking? It was only Border Patrol, the ones we encountered there at the gate. Okay. So they pointed you into what field or area that something was saw? I mean, someone saw something? I mean, why did you pick the location that you searched? The location we picked, that we searched was due to the fact Border Patrol had advised us that Mr. Kelly had left his residence with his canine since his weapon and started to make his way south following the subjects. Yes, sir, but the field that you searched was the east side and the direction that Mr. Kelly took was south. Correct. And, and south was also the direction of the five initial people that uh, the, the Kelly saw was heading. So you didn't go search south, did you? We went south. We didn't, at the beginning of the residence, we didn't go south due to the fact it was gated. We were trying to find a way how to jump the fence. Okay. So let me, let me help you maybe with some photos. Let's see if, if those don't assist you. Or refresh your memory. Let me uh, show you what's already been admitted in JJ. Or it would be KK. Clint tells us that JJ and KK are the same thing. And actually, I guess if I looked on this, I would know KK, you're on. Sorry. This has been my.
That's there it is, Judge. This is the can. showing you a collection of photos that was previously entered into evidence. Um, this is a scene from uh, that's been determined that the house, as you exit the house, this is the patio on the piece of property. Okay? Okay. All right. If there's, uh, does this look familiar to you, Al? Yes, sure. Is that confident? Yes. So this, looking out into this patio, would be facing in the east direction. Are you disputing that? I'm not disputing that. Okay. And that would mean that south would be to the right of the photo. And if you're that far enough, you would see the vehicles. We could put that map on if you need it again. And the little roadway to where Mr. Kelly was on the gates and all that, right? Yes, correct. Okay. So if the gates, the roadway, from the direction of Mr. Kelly or where you parked your vehicles initially was to the right, um, this would be a patio that would filter off of that and be heading into the east direction. Following me? Yes. Okay. Um, now, you said something about a ladder. Remember that? That's correct. Now, the ladder, I don't know if you recall or not, isn't it true that it was... Um, the, if we're looking at the picture, it's going to be to your left. If we're standing, if we took that picture. Okay. So let me point up here. So it would be to the left of this picture. Yes, correct. Okay. Makes more sense. So now you could possibly see a little bit of a fence line out there. Let me see if I zoom. We'll see it on this, but if not, we will see it on another photo. Brenner, just a correction for the record. This is not a state's photo. This is a defense okay. photo. And it was not taken by the state, just for clarification. That is not a state's photo, that's a defense photo. Your question or your objection? No, I'm just no. clarifying the record. Okay, can you see what appears to be out there a little bit of a fence line? Barely. Okay, but we'll get another photo here in a minute. Okay, and this fence line was Bob Wire. Yes. And do you, did you have to notice? Because you mentioned another fence line out there that you did not have a ladder. You had to go under. Do you remember that testimony? Yes, correct. Was that a smooth wire? Did no. you even notice? I remember recall, no. Okay, that's fine. But you didn't get caught up in the bump wire? No. Okay. So if the ladder is to the left as we look at this wall and the portrayal of the picture, uh, let's talk about what that looks like. So a bob wire might come up to what? Chest, how high do you think the fence line is? It will be shoot to a chest. Okay. And I'm illustrating across my chest about approximate height of the wall of the fence, right? Correct. Okay. Now the ladder, was it true that it literally had some uh, it, it was like one ladder going up on an angle to the top of the fence line, right? And the other one, I'm illustrating with my arms, I'm making almost a, um, an A coming down on the other side, right? Correct. So to get up and over that wasn't the easiest thing in the world, was it? No, it wasn't. Okay. And you're young. How old are you? 25. Okay. And so for you to get up there, you cautiously climbed it, right? Yes, I did. Okay. But for someone that's elderly, it would be a major challenge to try to do that, wouldn't it? Yes, it can. Okay, thank you. Now, but it was there for whatever reason. And did you know that he's owned this property for at least 10 years? No, I did not. Didn't know that? Okay. Now, if the, fan, if the ladder that helped you get over the first fence line um, assisted you, did you go off away from the home or did y'all come back in this direction to the right? Closer to the south to, to fan out. It was just right after a little bit east south. We didn't deviate a lot of south. We just saw the next fence and tried to find an entrance. 
what I'm suggesting is you made it sound like you were the first one in the row and everyone followed to the left of you, correct? Correct. You didn't go like out of the area of the property where things didn't happen, did you? Or were you did you focus once you found the ladder, come back in this direction? I wasn't the first person that located the ladder. That's why we followed everybody else towards the ladder. I'm asking after you got out off the ladder, did you all fan out in this direction? We, f we fanned out straight to the next entrance we saw under the bulb wire. No, 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 I didn't start the search yet. I'm at the beginning. You got a bunch of officers there, and they're going to spread out, right, and do this search, correct? Correct. Okay, so what, did you search inside this bob wire area? No, we didn't. You never checked around to see if there's anyone there? No, we didn't. And then when you climbed over this ladder, did you go away from the house to search? Or did you come back now that you found a way to get over it and spread out in this direction that we see it in this photo? I would have to, do not recall, I have to see the next fence where it is to see if it's a this area. Well, if you look far out from this direction after you clear this whole part of the pasture, you're going to find a parallel fence. And we'll get there, but that's that's out further, and the ravine is straight out. Does that help you at all? Not exactly from the location where the ladder is. Again, the ladder's to the left. Did you come back in front of the house and, and spread out in this general direction? After we passed the second fence, we just start spread out. So you didn't even bother to search this area right here? Not inside the property. Or between the two fences? You did not search in between the two fences? Just the general view, what we were able to see. Okay, but you admitted that there is pretty tall grass out there, correct? Correct. And there's a lot. Zooming out a little bit further. Oops, let's locate it better. Come on, zoom. Let me see if I need to undo it. Okay. Do you see this is next to the pergola right here? On the left side of the screen, as we're looking at it, there is one of the posts for the pergola patio cover correct okay and we're looking out can you see that yes okay and you see the terrain yes correct well how do you know someone's not behind one of these little bushes tr trees or cactuses or whatever terrain that's out there how do you know that's pretty hard to see if someone's behind you but you're looking for people right this is not what they taught you in the academy is it the academy the is it? Nope. Okay. A search is a search, and you need to be thorough. You may not be looking in every hole, but you are doing a sweep looking for anything that might be dangerous, like a person with guns, right? Yes, sir. And you're saying that once you cross the fence, you can see one of the posts here, can't you? Correct. That was the first fence. That is the first fence. Correct. And down further back your imagination a little bit, there'll be another fence running parallel to this fence. Is that correct? Correct. And then past that, after you go a little ways, you'll eventually get to the uh, the ravine, the wash, the roya, whatever you want to call it, right? Correct. Okay. So my question is, are you saying you didn't bother to look in between these two fences? Just a general view. Okay. Now let's talk about the next set of offenses. What happened then? You said you, you fanned out there? After the second fence? Yes, sir. That's correct. After the second fence, that's when I met up back with Deputy Cabrera and Deputy Castanea and Sergeant Yuri Garcia. So, uh, did a widespread. Just going to go through my photos here. So 
So some of the things that are on there is you got this smoker right there, right? You see it? Yes. No. And where the ladder was, there is a pump house also right there, wasn't there? Yes. Did you look around that? Just around the pump house. You looked around the pump house? I passed the pump house when I looked around it. In it. So if you went to the ladder, you wouldn't walk all the way around all four sides of the pump house? Correct. Okay, so you didn't search this area either? No. Okay. So your job is to go looking for someone and now you're in here testifying that you didn't really look? I'm, I'm kind of confused. Can you explain? So by the time we got there, it was 20, 30 minutes. Once we went with Border Patrol, we were advised that Mr. Kelly had run south. So that's why we we're looking more in the direction of south, you know, taking in consideration the time people had to run south. Mr. Kelly had taken off south. We we're looking more down the road in the Arroyo. Nothing in the property or close to it. what you call the security sweep of any threats that could be around this location for the protection of the Kellys, correct?
the second time you say or first time? Just any time. First time when round that direction, east of the property. This is east. Did you ever go south and follow the direction of where the five possible subjects ran across the window from the view of the Kellys? We started walking south once we passed the Arroyo and Eric. Is that to your car? Well, the car was behind the property, so that's not towards the car. How far south from the uh, driveway or the little driveway did you go? Once we hit the two track road after the Arroyo, that's when we walked back to the residence. Yes, is, is that where their fence line allows you to come through? The first. There's a gated. Yes. So you didn't go anywhere in any direction to verify whether someone was still around this location, correct? Correct. Were you able to observe the two dogs? You pay any attention to them? Didn't pay attention to the canines. Canines can be very smart and tell you what's out somewhere. Did you even look to see if they were alerting to anything anywhere? No, there's not. No, they're right next to Mr. Kelly. These are pretty inquisitive canines. Are you sure? I'm sure they're right they next to Mr. Kelly. Sorry to talk over you. I didn't mean to do that. They didn't follow you guys out there once they came back to the house with Mr. Kelly? They didn't come out there to see where you were? Did I recall? No, they were right next to Mr. Kelly. But you saw the wash. You saw how it sloped down and then dropped at that point and into a sandy bank of some sort, correct? Correct the beginning. The picture does not make it justice as a wash I'm trying to explain. I understand that. I agree because it's overhead, right? Right. Right. But when you're looking at it, on the ground, it gives a different feeling. The whole the whole area does, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. And so, um, so your cursory search really wasn't much of a search, was it? It was a search until we located Mr. Kelly. Well, when Mr. Kelly was brought up, you guys were, you know, spread out in the field. And so you just called it off once you saw him? That time when I went back to form my vehicle and drove down the two track and located Mr. Kelly walking up the two track with the, his canines and the Border Patrol agents, that's when I spoke with them. You want to explain what a two track is in case you get a note later and we solve that? A uh, two track is the road that was next to the property. Uh, it was the first outline at the end of the map. If we have the map, I can show you what the two track is. Um, it's just a road that anybody can make with either tractor, vehicles, ATVs, UTVs. So the fact that Mr. Kelly has an ATV driving around, he would, if he keeps going over the same location, it would cause this two track? Correct. Okay. So it's packed it down um, ground that looks like a path, correct? Yes, correct. Okay. It's not really a roadway per se, right? Correct. It's just more for... Uh, ranch equipment could use it, maybe? Correct? Correct. Walking path, maybe? Yes. Okay. Just wanted to get that clarity. Now, did you find something strange about a flashlight wrapped around a gun? Yes, for me it was. Why is that? Because it was, it was strange that it was being held with black duct tape. Okay. You know, it costs money to get lights, flashlights to some of the weapons. I mean, that there are some things that are out there, but it costs money, right? That's correct. So this is, you could buy that, in other words, if you go in a gun store, depending on the gun, but you might be able to find something that you could attach to your weapon, whether a handgun or rifle, and it would provide light ahead of you, correct? That's correct. Okay, so this is just a makeshift of that, isn't it? Yes. Okay, so the fact that if he had one that he bought, would that be less strange? Not that strange, but it was something I would all notice that had a light next to it. 
He lives on a ranch of over 100 acres big. Do you understand that? Yes. And there's things that he needs to check out at night, and there is no lighting in the evening. Were you, you out there in the evening? Not in the evening. Okay. Would it surprise you there's no street lights? I wouldn't. It's a ranch. It's a ranch. Acres. Exactly. Thank you, sir. And so to have a flashlight, if you had to hold a weapon, wouldn't it be easier just to wrap it around the stock in order to look around? Yes, you can, but we know a barrel creates heat once you shoot a weapon, so it will melt the glue on the tape. Well, you might know that, but apparently it didn't melt it because it was on when you saw it, right? Correct. And by the look of the tape, I don't know, it could be very old. Approach the open So this is not your typical flashlight either, is it? No. Okay. Can you see it in the back? And what kind of light do you think it might be? Can it be a weapons light? No, it could be any light you could buy at hardware store probably or online. But small, like one would be found on a weapon, right? That's correct. Look at the tape. Does it look brand new? Not really. You know, I may just walk by the jurors for this one. Pretty smart, wouldn't you agree? Hold that. Could be pretty smart that he did that to his rifle. Could be anybody's opinion. Well, this is winter, right? That's correct. January 30th. And the sun goes down quicker in the winter, doesn't it? Yes. Correct? Yes. And you don't know what his responsibilities of livestock, if he needs something in his barn. You have no idea, right? I do not. Okay. So this provides a means of lighting, right? For Mr. Kelly, yes. Yeah, sure. So there was one single shot that he reported before he went to, to leave his living room or leave his house to go outside. Is that right? That's correct. And are you aware there was one single shot found on this body? No, I am. Okay. And so he's in the home hearing a shot based on his testimony, his 911 call, his contact with Border Patrol. And now later we learn at a different moment of time, not on your watch yet, but we learn that there is a body out there that has a single shot also, correct? Yes, correct. Now, he told you when he saw these people that he was on the Kitchen Island, right? Yes, he did. And you, you testified that earlier. Yes, I did. So if I'm standing at my Kitchen Island making my lunch, did he tell you he was making his lunch? He didn't tell me what he was doing exactly. Okay. And did you notice that he could look through the living room and out his big picture windows? And he would look onto the photo his pergola, his patio, correct? Correct. Okay. Did you see those big picture windows? 
saw that big picture window once I went back the second day. Okay, so you're aware of what I'm talking about? Yes. Okay. And he claims he sees someone goes across there with these, did he describe backpacks? Correct, he described five subjects wearing backpacks and camouflage running south. Okay. And then alerted to the gunshot, which you don't know, there was a, a phone call made and then he went out. But, Now, when he walked, when he saw these subjects, he grabbed his rifle, right? Yes, sir. And did you know or did you learn that he had come in? Come in the house from the morning being outside. That he placed his rifle by the door. I did not have done that. Okay. Had that happened, would that be respectful to his wife to not carry it in throughout the house? Yes. Nothing wrong with that, right? Yeah. Okay. So if he leaves, the rifle will be right by the door. That's kind of convenient, isn't it? Okay. Yes. So then you learned, after he said he knew where the gun was, you paraphrase what you heard. I'm not sure if that's accurate or not, but you, you, you testify to what you heard, that he keeps this gun there, his baby or whatever right, you his referenced. Baby us by the yeah. gun. Um, that he exited at that point, okay? Yes. We've all heard he's made a phone call by now, okay? You don't know that, right? No, I did not know that. Okay. And observe the subjects were possibly carrying rifles. Right. Now, he heard a shot, right? Right. And you got five people running by. It's a little hard to see exactly what's going on, and I imagine his adrenaline was up. Would that be reasonable? Yes, that would be reasonable. Okay. Now, when you asked him if they shot at him, he was being very honest, right? Yes, he was. He doesn't know who actually shot because he was coming out the door. He was still in his house. Right. Okay. But it was close enough to alarm him. Would you agree? I agree. It was close enough to alarm his horse. Would you agree? Yes. And it was close enough to alarm you know, and get his wife upset too, right? Yes. So he didn't know who, which direction they were shooting, but it could have been at his horse. Could have been at some each other. He didn't know, right? All right, he didn't know. That. Okay. So he's not sitting here lying to you or anything, right? Vouching of the witness of the veracity of another witness is completely improper. Do you have any reason to believe he was not being truthful? Same objection, Your Honor. Go ahead. No. Okay. Now, we also told you, because now when he's talking to you, the event is over, right? Correct. He's not on the phone reporting what he's seeing, correct? Correct. Okay. So he's already been out towards his barn or wherever the deputy or the border patrol found him, correct? Right. And he's come back in. So he knows what he saw at that point in time, what event took place, correct? Right. And he mentions possible members of another cartel. And possibly with that in mind, maybe they were shooting at each other, right? Right. He didn't know that for a fact, did he? Nope. He was sort of speculating from his observation, right? Right. That means he had to see, possibly, with that in mind, that there was a chance he saw another group. Your Honor, objection calls for speculation. Understood. 
Did you ask him why he would know that? I did not ask him. Isn't it the job, and I know you were new, but isn't it the job of a um, investigating team, including patrol, to ask questions? Yes. Okay. So then he said he began to try to follow the subjects along with his two dogs. He didn't say he chased them, did he? No. No. Actually, the direction he went into is where his barn was. Did you learn that later? Didn't ask him where he had stopped or made it to. We just found him on the two track in the road. Right. Well, so you don't know that he was returning when Border Patrol intercepted him. Did you know that he was returning from his barn when Border Patrol intercepted him? Did you know that? No. Did you ever learn that? No. So you don't know that he was chasing someone or just checking on his property, right? You don't really know, do you? No, I just. Now, do you know that my uh, client uh, um, Alan Kelly is a left-handed person. I do not know. Okay. And how you hold a gun would probably be, especially if you know anything about a gun, you're going to take your strong arm, whichever it is, right or left, and keep it closer to where the trigger would be, correct? Correct. So if I'm going to pick up this rifle and hold it, my and I am right-handed, I would grab the stock with my right hand and the barrel with my left, right? right? Because I could easily move to the trigger if something happened. Right. It would be the opposite if you were left-handed, correct? It could be, depending okay. on the person. Well, if you know anything about guns, and say you know how to shoot a gun, you're gonna be wise about it, right? That's correct. Okay. Now, obviously, the Border Patrol did not feel in any threat with him carrying his weapon, right? Right. Because no one told him to disarm at this time, did they? Nope. Okay. So everyone treated him as a victim like he should have been treated all along, correct? Objection. 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 Did everyone, let me rephrase it, see if the court's okay with this. Did everyone treat him as a potential victim rather than a suspect at this point in time. At this point in time, I treated him as a reporting party. Okay, which could be a victim, right? Depending on the outcome of the investigation. It was his property, correct? Correct. It was him that heard shots on his own property, correct? Correct. It's him that saw five people with weapons and backpacks, possibly illegal smugglers, Going across his property, that makes him a victim too, doesn't it? Correct, as you stated, possibly carrying. Thank you. And the fact that just going with the potential that the two parties, Mrs. Kelly and Mr. Kelly, reported what they did. If one shot was heard while he was still in the house, who shot it? Do you know? I do not know. How long were you out there searching the property? Do not recall. I mean, can you, does it feel like five minutes? Feel like an hour? No, an estimate could be at least minimal of 30 minutes. That seems, 30 minutes it seems a little early, don't you think? Seems until we located Mr. Kelly. Well, okay. how about pine trees? Do you see any pine trees out there? Not that I recall. Usually it's mesquite. Uh -huh. Okay. And you paid attention, like, a, I don't know, you paid attention to the weapon that um, Mr. Kelly had and later helped to identify what it looked like, huh? That's correct. You were the brand new recruit that was the only one that knew what it looked like. 
Yes. Well, and, and, and that's good. You are being alert, right? Yes. Trying to be a good recruit. And you have no idea why the gun was hanging where it was. You have no information about that, right? On the 31st that it was located yes. in the house? No, I do not. Okay. You don't know if someone told them to put it there, right? No. You have no idea. I have no idea. Did you look at all for anything that could look like tracks? Try to locate down there. Tracks were seen of you know, horses, um, people walking around. Could have been anybody. There were a lot, weren't there? There were a lot. Right. So you don't know if they were fresh or old. Correct. But it clearly, and, and are you speaking of the Royal or on the property or both? General. Both of the area. Okay. Pass the windows. All right. I think this is because we're going to go back to the recess. Uh, we start at one thirty. It's now two forty. Take a thirty minute recess. We'll come back in about ten after three.
jurors are here. Our counsel and the defendant are here. And when the witness is ready, when the state is ready, you can begin your new direct examination. Thank you. Stephanie Monreal, I want to start first with the map that we talked about earlier. If you could get to the screen, please. For everyone. I'm going to for you again what's previously been admitted as state's exhibit 114. Do you see that in front yeah. of you? Yes. We were talking earlier about a two track. Um, is that do you see that two track we were discussing here in this in this map? Yes. Could you point to it for the jury? Sorry the two track again. <laughs> And does that, where, where does it go? Where all does it go? Goes all the way down the road. And I see some grass in the middle of the road on the lower part of that. Is that why they call it a two track? Because some grass sometimes grows in the middle? Correct. Okay. And, um, was this the type of road that you were able to drive your own patrol car on? Yes, correct. So it's not just like a dirt path or anything, it's actually a road? Be considered a road. I mean, it's good yes. enough for a car to drive on. Yes. Now I just want to clear up. I want to, I want to start back from the beginning. What did you initially know about the call when you got there? What I initially knew was shots fired in the area. What's your What's your priority when you get a report of shots fired? Just make sure everybody's safe. Would that have included the reporting party? Yes, correct. So then, would your pri What would your priority have been when you got to the location? It would be make contact with our reporting party. And is that what you attempted to do in this case? That's what I attempted to do once we had heard that he had uh, left south. So you get there, you get the report that he's headed south, and you're there, there are four of you and two border patrol, is that right? Correct. And you all split up? Yes. And if I understand correctly, border patrol went directly south. You're not objecting to leading? It's foundational, it's a rule. So as I understand it, two Border Patrol officers went direct south, is that right? That's what they could have done, did not see what direction they went. If you don't know, I'm not asking you to tell me that. Um, so you don't know where the Border Patrol went, is that right? Correct. But you're with your sergeant, your training officer, and another deputy. Yes, sir. And as I understand it, you all head east with the plan to head south. Yes, sir. I'm just trying to get to where we were, Judge, so I can ask the well, question. The problem was with, with the question before where I overruled the objection, I thought it was a foundational question. He said he didn't know. So let's ask open ended questions. The objection sustained. Did you testify earlier that you all headed east so that you could try to find a way south? Yes, correct. All right. And when you headed east, what did you run into? I headed east, you ran into the well, first the gate the barbed wire fence and so when you ran into the barbed wire fence you're which direction are you trying to still head at that point east but what's your eventual goal eventual goal is south all right so you you're heading east you run into a fence and then you you eventually get over the fence is that right that's correct and then you head east some more and go under a fence is that right yes correct at this point, did you have any information from Mr. Kelly about where he saw people running or where he, where he heard a shot or anything of that nature? No, negative. I did not have any information. And so after you headed under that second fence, what direction did you go? So the east-south, starting going south. 
and he said you headed into the area where the where the you could see the arroyo and dirt is that right that's correct do you see on the map exhibit 114 the arroyo that you were talking about that you could actually see the dirt in yes and you drew a, a diagram earlier about which direction you headed is that right that's correct and you said you headed straight east from the ladder structure by the pump house is that right yes correct and then from there you headed south yes and so when you headed south is that when you went into the arroyo yes and then after you headed into the arroyo where did you go from there from the arroyo we jumped to the road that i marked and when you got to the road which direction did you go we followed the road back towards the residence okay and that's when you talked to mrs kelly yes sir so at this point did you know anything about what had happened out there no, at that point i did not know what was going on And you, if I under, if I remember your testimony correctly, with the defense, you indicated that the grass was up to your knees or so. Is that right? Correct. I think that yes. Now I'm showing you what's been admitted as state's exhibit thirty-five image number 0038 now I'm showing you a photograph of the body that was located that day even if you had been looking for the body at this point do you think if you'd walked past it you'd have been able to see this body as you were walking out there objection leading not at this point it would have been difficult uh, it, how many acres are we talking I remember recalling 10 acres to yes, see the area. So you, yeah. saw, you thought you were looking at 10 acres, is that right? Correct. And so finding this body and two feet of grass, do you think that what you were doing when you referred to it as a cursory search would have located this? No. If you had had additional information that Mr. Kelly had discharged his weapon in a specific direction, do you think you would have conducted a different search? This would have made us conduct a different search. When you met up with Mr. Kelly and you had your conversation with him, were you in the house or were you somewhere else? I was somewhere else. Where were you? It was on the road. I uh, didn't show really in the picture. The road turned the curve. So, this picture doesn't show where you saw him? Not correct. It was where the, there's an, like an elbow? In More the... south. The, okay. the road comes back okay. near a farm or type of farm location. So, further south and east? Yes. Okay. And when you had that conversation with Mr. Kelly, and he was he was giving you his statement about what happened. At any point, did he tell you he discharged his weapon? No, not at any point did he tell me. And when you told us earlier um, which door you thought he went out, did he show you which door he went out? No, he never showed me or so mentioned which door. When you told us earlier which door it was, were you guessing? It was more of a assumption. Now, when Mr. Kelly talked to you about the AK-47, did he tell you that he put it by the a by the door to be polite to his wife? No, he never mentioned it. What specifically did he say about the AK? It was just a comment of this baby's always by the door. make sure that we have a good picture of this so when you cross that 
fence line. Were you able to look to your right and see um, backwards towards the house? Yes, it's, you can see the house. Okay, so I'm gonna play that video one more time, which is State's Exhibit, admitted as State's Exhibit 36. So when Ms. Lothorpe was asking you if you'd never looked at the other side of the smoker, would you have been able to see that once you crossed the fence line and looked back? Yes, partially. And off in the distance, can you see um, the road that we were just talking about in this map, in this uh, yes, drone fo footage? Can you also sort of see the dirt from the um, arroyo off in the distance? And if you can't, that's okay, I can just... Partially, I was able to see at the end, at that turn. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about the difference between field tra field training versus a ride along. Is there something called a ride along? There is something called a ride along. Ride along is anybody public from the community member, other employees such as booking clerks, detention officers, they can request to go on a ride along with a deputy. They'll just have to sign a waiver, consenting, and they'll go with any deputy they would like to. So they can have an evening shift riding along with the deputy to correct. see what y'all do. Yes, correct. You weren't doing a ride along, correct? Not correct. I was not doing a ride along. You were actually doing your field training. I was doing a field training. Now, when you're on your field training, you're with in your phase three. You're with a deputy. Is that right? Yes, I'm with the deputy. But you've already moved through two of your phases, so you're not just watching, correct? That's correct. What is phase three? Phase three is, that time was with Deputy Alvaro Cabrera, Special 139. It's basically, she told me, all right, you're going to take control more of the calls. You'll try to do as much as you can. If you get stuck, I'm there to help you. If you do something you're not supposed to, I will help you. So basically, you're doing the work and she's watching over your shoulder to make sure you don't mess anything up. Correct. And she's there as a resource. Yes, correct. So that's the that's the phase you were in in this case. Yes. Did anyone tell you how to write your report in this case? Not what's right in it, but Carrera would review it once I wrote my report. So she made sure it was accurate that you hadn't made any errors. And yes, correct. The reading and reviewing of the answers to state. So you, my question to you is about that report. Did anyone tell you to use the phrase cursory search in your report? No. That was how you described the search that you did. Was that how you described the search that you did when you went to look for Mr. Kelly? Yes, ma'am. And when you found Mr. Kelly, what did he tell you about these subjects that he thought he had seen, where he thought they were at that point? At that point, once I met up with Mr. Kelly, he just stayed, he probably made it over the border back to Mexico. So according to Mr. Kelly, then he thought they were gone already. Was there anything for you to look for at that point? At that point, there wasn't. Can I have just a second, Brian? Thank you.
I had there. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Questions for this witness from members of the jury? Okay. At least one. Demonstrating the way when I looked at him, Mr. Kelly, the way he was holding the weapon. This was the way Mr. Kelly was holding the weapon when I approached him when he was walking up the track road with the two board patrol. Okay. Just have a sling. I know you're trying to see why this is a big importance. There's no, there's no questions, Kevin. So, just uh, the, the lawyers may ask some more questions after this, but for right now, just demonstrate what it would look like on the other side. On the other side, left side. Now, the lawyer, hold on a second. Does that suffice? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so let's put that away, and then I'm going to allow the uh, lawyers to. Uh, have some follow-up questions, and I'll give the questions. Thank you, Anna. Is there a reason why you noted how he was carrying the weapon? Just the reason why safety, putting the, the muscle backwards, that makes it safe, is that what you're saying? It's safe, it's not, I don't feel he was feeling any immediate threat to have it patrol or ready, just downwards. Would it matter um, safety-wise, right versus left? No, it wouldn't matter. Okay. But you document, 
if I understood you correctly, you documented that it was on the right. Is that correct? Yes, correct. That's all I have. Would you, sir, would you agree if a person's left handed, they would hold things differently? They could, they could hound, yes, correct. Someone that knows how to handle a gun would hold it so the trigger is closest to the hand that would be shooting, correct? Pulling the trigger. Correct. Okay. So, could I also ask this witness, just for demonstrative purposes, if he could do the same thing with the cradling, as we heard earlier testimony before we get rid of the gun? Would that be all right with the court? Left and right? I don't object, Judge, but I'm not sure the witness will know what, what we mean by that. But we can certainly have him try. Right. Well, just ask some foundational questions to see if he's able to put it down. Well, you have him almost in a military approach, like he's holding it over his shoulder. Is it possible that he was cradling it on one side or the other with his arms? No, I do remember, recall that the muscles went backwards from him. Up over the shoulder? Over the shoulder. Would you agree that if you cradled it, do you know what I mean by cradled it? Correct. Yes. And often referred to as a hunting position. How's that? Does that help at all? Yes. Okay. That, again, the muzzle would be pointing in different directions depending if they're right or left-handed. Would you agree with that? Yes. Would you have personal knowledge of what I mean that you could demonstrate it for the jurors? Yes. We wanted to demonstrate specifically what? Cradling on both sides? Yes, sir. Just want to make sure I understand. And while he's in that position, Your Honor, may I do a follow-up question with it? Um, which position would allow him, if he's right-handed, which position would be more likely to allow him to get to the trigger quicker? Well, if he used his left hand from that position, he would have to shift the gun in order to get his right hand on the trigger, correct? Get his left hand on the trigger? If he was in the position you're showing, go ahead and let the, just a little bit, just so the jurors can see too. Um, if you were to go from there and to get into a ready position with the rifle, what kind of shifting would it take if you're right-handed? It wouldn't take that much since he's already here. You can start with the left and move on. You'd have to flip it? Not that much. I'm asking to get his hand on the trigger without putting your hand on the trigger like you know how you're trained. Put the grip the trigger if you can. Right. But he's right-handed and your right hand would get to the trigger, right, in order to use the gun? At this point, it would be easier for my left hand to go to the handle of the trigger. Okay. My right hand. And, and it would... Everyone's different, but then if you cradle it the other way? Cradle it the other way. Cradle And to get the left hand to the trigger, again, it takes a little more manipulating, wouldn't you agree? Yes, it would. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. I don't know if that helped or not, but you got to answer your question. Okay, any other questions? All right. Excuse. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Sir, you are excused. Let's get on this real quickly before you call your next witness. Okay.
state can call its next witness. Thank you, Your Honor. The state calls Deputy Castaneda. Sir, if you come over here, the witness stand, have a seat. That's a question. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Hummel, looks like you're going to do the examination. So Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Could you please tell the jury your full name and spell your last name? Yes, my name is uh, Deputy Cristobal Castaneda, batch 144 with the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office. Last name is spelled C-A-S-T-A-N-E-D-A. -A. And you speak really quick, so I'm just going to remind you before we get started, if you could speak slowly so the court reporter can take down what you're saying. And Deputy, can you tell the jury a little bit um, about your background? Are you currently employed with the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Department? Yes, correct. And can you tell the jury what your current position is, how um, long you've held it, and how and your background? Uh, I am a, an employee deputy with the Santa Cruz County Sheriff's Office. I have been employed for six years and three months. Um, my employment began in January of... Uh, 2018 uh, till present. Did you go to an academy to become a uh, certified deputy? Yes, I attend, attended Selexi uh, in Tucson, Arizona. And have you had other training since then? Other trainings um, after attending the academy, I uh, graduated and then I uh, had the three months of uh, field training officer. And then I went on to, for, for three months, and then I went on to patrol. And is that what you've done since you became a deputy patrol? Correct. And were you on, patro on patrol, on duty, on January 30th of 2023? Correct. On that date, did you, were you called to an incident at 100 Willowcross Circle? Yes, correct. And when you got to that call, what was the first thing you observed when you arrived? When I arrived at the call, I met with uh, um, the other deputies who were already on scene. Uh, it was Deputy Monreal, batch 191, Deputy Cabrera, batch 139, and uh, Sergeant Garcia, batch 130. Was there anyone else, law enforcement-wise, at the location when you arrived? Yes. Who was there? Uh, there was two Border Patrol agents. And what did you do when you first got there? Uh, I met with them and uh, kind of briefed on, on what the situation was with, with them. What did they tell you? Uh, they advised me that, uh, that the homeowner had, uh, had left the area um, in reference to to what the call had been about. Did they tell you which direction? Uh, yes. What direction did they tell you? South, southwest. Once you had that information, what did you do? Uh, we began to conduct a cursory search of, uh, of the area um, towards the area that was uh, pointed out to us, which was southwest of, of the residence. When you say a cursory search, could you tell the jury what you mean by that and what you were looking for? Uh, at the time, we were looking for uh, the homeowner. Um, he was uh, identified as Mr. George Kelly, uh, as well as um, 
attempting to find if we if we could see the any of the subjects that were mentioned during the initial call. Which direction did you go? Did you go to the home? To the back of the home. Okay. I'm going to show you what's been admitted as State's Exhibit 114. Does that look familiar to you? Yes. If I zoom it in, would that be more helpful? Yes. You described um, going to the back of the home. Which area on this map did you mean when you said you went to the back of the home? It's and if a little you, part to if you, Do you have a stylus in front of you, like a little pen? Yes. yes. And if you ch touch the upper left-hand corner, it'll let you draw. Just touch on the screen, upper left-hand corner. Now you should be able to draw. Can you draw? Just draw an X in the location where you are, the side of the house you all went to. Could you zoom it in a little bit more? I think it's possible. Actually, can't do it any further. Do you do you recall walking in next to a? Do you, did you see a garage at all when you got there? I don't recall. Do you remember seeing an area where there was a fenced area and a front door? Yes. Like just a walled-in front front area with a front door. Um, the, the fenced area. Okay. Um, when you say fenced area, what do you mean by fenced area? Uh, it was a wire fence. Um, there was like, there was a next to the house, and the, 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 that's where the ho uh, horse was located. Inside the fence. In, in, in terms, inside that fence area. Okay. So there was like a barbed wire fenced area next to the house. Correct. Is that the side of the residence you were on? Yes. Okay. And so I have a, some drone footage of that. Uh, would that help orient you? Yes. I can turn the screen off for a minute. If you would, please. I didn't have that queued up on there. I'm going to show you now what's been admitted in State's Exhibit 36, and you let us know if you recognize this. Yes. Is that a fence line? Yes. Is this the area you were talking about that the horse was located? Correct. And do you see a, a pergola or a gazebo that was in this area? I'll go back in a minute when, when it finishes. Does that give you an idea of the location? Yes. Let me let you see it from the other direction and see if that helps. Is that helpful to look at it from that direction? Yes. And are you able to tell us? Back up a little bit. Are you able to tell us from the? Does that map? Does that help you figure out where you were on the map? Yes. Okay. And let me zoom you back in on the map. Now looking
looking at that map, can you tell us which side of the house you were on? So I see you put a green arrow on the screen. Is that the side of the house you were on? That looks like the like the arrow from the gazebo. Okay, so the gazebo, that's the side of the house you were on. Uh, when we began our, our search. Okay. And then what did y'all do? What were y'all looking for? Uh, we were looking for subjects uh, actively running as well as uh, for Mr. Kelly. And when you got to this side of the residence, what did y'all do? Uh, once we went to the to that to the side of the residence, uh, we noticed there was a that uh, wire fence, and um, we crossed that wire fence through a through a ladder. It was uh, in between the, that uh, that fence. And then started walking that area, and then we hit another a second uh, fence, and then went underneath that fence and kept kept on searching. And I know that it's kind of uh, kind of small, but are you able to tell us what that ladder structure was near? Was it near another structure? Yes. What was it near? Um, I'm not sure if it was a shed or a, a brick. Uh, it was a small building. Okay. Can you see that on the map that we're looking at now? I can't tell from, from the picture. I'm not sure. Is there a small square? Um, Building to the northeast of the residence. Yes. Is that the building? Are you able to tell? It looks a little greenish. That that would be the building. Okay. And so when you when you crossed over the ladder structure, you said you crossed the ladder structure into the fence, and then where did you go from there? Uh, we started making our way uh, south southwest. Did you cross another fence before you started going south southwest, or did you go directly south southwest? I don't recall. Okay. And when you say south southwest, uh, which way would it, would be west on this? Towards that area. Okay. Is that the direction you travel? Um, southwest. Okay. So can you maybe draw for us which direction you went if you crossed the fence and then crossed another fence line? Yes. So that's the direction you think you traveled? Yes, southwest. Did you, did you, and you crossed over up above by where the little structure is? We, we passed that structure and then started heading south. Okay, and so I, I, I think maybe I, I'm not understanding you. To the um, north of the house, do you see a little square? Yes. Is that the area where the ladder was? Can it's you like circle it? This one. Yeah, right. is, that, is that where the ladder was? That was where, uh, close to where the ladder was. Okay, can you circle that? And you said you crossed over the fence there, and then you crossed the second fence. Do you know where you crossed the second fence? I'm not able to see it from, from the picture. Okay, it's you're not very clear. So you're not very, you're not sure. No. Do you know if you cross? Do you see a dirt road to the east of that? Do you yes. know if you cross that dirt road? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. And so when you crossed over into the fence line. And at some point you crossed another fence line. You think you headed south, straight south through the through the fence through the area, or did you cross over the fence before you headed south? I don't I don't recall if we started or if I started heading south or, or west uh, before or after the, the fence. Okay, that's fair. And then when you what do you remember seeing next after you headed south southwest? What's the next thing you remember searching? Uh, again, we were searching for Mr. Kelly and, and those subjects uh, that were mentioned um, during the, the call. Um, and I kept walking, um, attempting to locate uh, either Mr. Kelly or the subjects. And uh, 
at some point uh, I I did made it all the way to a third fence line. Okay, and which direction was that fence line? I'm not able to see it here on, on the picture. Can you just point for us which direction? I, I'm not sure. You don't know which direction you went? So if north is, is the top of the screen, and south is the bottom of the screen, and east is the right side, and west is the left side, do you know which direction you went after you got to the bottom of where your line is? I would have I would have been going this through this area. South, okay, southwest. So heading southwest. Correct. Okay. And did you head further to the left of the screen? Did you head further to the bottom of the screen? Or which which direction were you going? That you hit another fence line? Uh, south. South. Did you hit a wash? I crossed through a wash. Okay, so you crossed through the wash. Let me make this screen a little bigger again. So I see a wash down further south. Did, is that the direction you he headed? Did that wash go further over? I'm not sure if he was going to this one right here. Um, okay, so do you see a, like a dirt area to the south part and the <coughs> to the right side of the screen towards the bottom? We're going to clear the screen for you first. Apologize, yes. Yeah. Right. And so down below, do you see on the right half of the screen, um, about two thirds of the way down, do you see a squiggly line of what looks like dirt colored? It's yes. Yes. It, does that appear to be a, a wash or an arroyo? Yes. Do you recall a wash or an arroyo in that location? Yes. And is, did that wash or arroyo continue on south? Correct. And is that the wash you crossed through? Yes. And after you crossed through the wash, did you see any buildings of any kind? Uh, on my way back, I did see a, a barn and another uh, brick building or a shed. So you crossed all the way past the barn? Correct. Even further west than that, is that what you're saying? Correct. And then after you got to there, what did you do? Uh, I kept searching, um, and then I um, I heard that uh, Mr. Kelly had been located, so I started making my way back. And how did you hear that? Over the radio. And when you started making your way back, what did you observe? I noticed uh, the barn and the small build, uh, building did you, that was close to it. When you saw those things, were you walking along the <coughs> wash or were you walking along a roadway? Uh, walking uh, up from the wash and then uh, met the, uh, a third road. When you got there, what did you do? I met with uh, Deputy Montreal and Deputy Cabrera. And after you met with them, what did you do next? Uh, Mr. Kelly was uh, was there on, at that road uh, he was offered a ride back to to the residence um, he advised us that he he would walk, walk back with his with his canines and then uh, deputy Montreal and deputy Cabrera gave me a ride to to the residence all that area that you searched were you did you see any of them no did you see anything at all no any kind of sign of anything having occurred no When you got back to the residence, what's the first thing you did? Getting back to the residence, I uh, I met with uh, 
of, you know, um, Ms. Uh, Wanda Kelly, and um, I started talking to her. You got a statement from Mrs. Kelly? Correct. And after you got a statement from Mrs. Kelly, what's the next thing that you did? Um, while I was talking to her, uh, Mr. Mr. Kelly arrived at the at the residence, uh, and then I went on to to get a statement from him. And when you saw Mr. Kelly, did you make any observations with him? Yes. What did you observe when you saw Mr. Kelly? Um, as I was talking to to Ms. Wanda, uh, Mr. Kelly arrived. Uh, I turned around and I saw Mr. Kelly enter the residence holding. Uh, a rifle in his hands. Did you notice if he had that rifle when you saw him out on the roadway? Yes. So is it the same rifle he had on the roadway? Yes. And when you saw him with the rifle, what did you see him do? Uh, he then walked inside and then went towards the kitchen area. And what did he do when he went to the kitchen area? Did you see any, him do anything? No, I turned back around to talk to, to keep talking to Ms. Wanda. All right. And when you, did you see Mr. Kelly again at some point? Yes. Did you make any observations about him then? Yes. What did you observe? Uh, he walked uh, back out uh, of the area he had went into uh, without his rifle. So he came back and did not have the rifle, is that what you're saying? Correct. Now you said you talked to um, Mr. Kelly where did you have this conversation? Do you recall? Yes. Where was it? Inside the residence, uh, by the by the entrance. By the, which entrance? By um, it would be in the west entrance. Would that be the front door, the back door? The front door. Front door. Okay. Yes. So when you're talking to Mr. Kelly, um, where does he tell you? he was when these events started? He told me he was standing by the kitchen. And did he tell you um, that he observed something? Correct. Where did he say he observed it through? Uh, living, door, uh, living room window. And what did he say he observed through the living room window? He advised me he observed approximately five subjects running south, southwest. Does the screen accurately reflect what you just told me a statement was? Yes. So what's the next thing that he told you happened? He advised me that he then walked uh, towards the east entrance. And is that not the front door? That's a different door than the front door? Correct. Okay, so he told you you went to the east entrance, and what, when you looked at the map, what would be near to that east entrance that you could tell us about that you saw on the map? The patio and the porch. Would we call that a gazebo? Correct. So on the side where the gazebo is, he told you he goes to that door? Correct. And when he went to the door, what did he say he did? He said that uh, he grabbed uh, the rifle that he, he keeps by that door. And where did he say he went from there? Uh, he went outside the residence. And when he went outside the residence, what did he tell you he observed? He observed uh, approximately five subjects. And what did he tell you he observed of them? Uh, that they were carrying backpacks and possibly carrying rifles. And does that accurately reflect what he told you? Yes. And what did he tell you happened once he got outside? I don't recall. Did he did he tell you that he heard something? Yes. What did he tell you he heard? He told me that he heard a single shot. 
And did he tell you what the single, did he tell you what kind of weapon he believed the shot was from? Yes. And what did he tell you? He told me that uh, the shot came from uh, an AK-47. And did he tell you anything about his um, knowledge of the sound of an AK-47? Yes. And what did he tell you? He told me that he was very familiar with the sounds that uh, that an AK-47 and an AR-15 make when, when, they, when being shot. And what did he say about the sound? That the sound definitely came from, uh, from an AK-47. And does that accurately reflect what he told you? Correct. Did he, did he make any comments to you about what he thought had happened? Yes. What did he tell you? Uh, Mr. Kelly told me that he believed that uh, the subjects he observed had uh, in encountered uh, other members of uh, the cartel. And what did he think had happened between the cartel members? He told me he believed that um, that they got into an altercation and the subjects uh, scared them by shooting. And did he indicate what he thought happened after the shot? I don't recall. Did he observe behavior after he heard the shot in the individuals? What observed behavior did he tell you he observed? I don't recall. Did he see the subjects going in some direction in some way? Yes. What did he observe? Uh, he observed them run, running south. And did he say he thought that was as a result of the shot? Yes. Does that accurately reflect what you just told me? Yes. Did he tell you how far away from the residence the subjects were? Yes. What did he tell you? He told me he observed them, uh, uh, that, that they were uh, approximately 100 to 150 yards. And so he told you that he's on the, I'm sorry, does that accurately, and did he say whether he saw those subjects again? Not after that. Does that accurately reflect what you just told me? Yes. Now, did he tell you when he was out on the patio, did he show you which direction he saw these individuals? I don't recall. He tells you it's 100, 100, 100 to 150 yards away, is that right? Correct. And he told you he was on the back, on the east side patio. Correct. Um, but did he tell you which direction they were? He, he pointed at some point. And which direction did he point? He pointed straight forward to where we were standing from the, from, uh, from the door. So from the door. the door directly forward, he said 100 to 150 yards. Correct. What did he tell you he did after he saw them 100, 250 yards away, and he never saw them again. What do you say he did next? Uh, he, after he grabbed his rifle, he went outside, and then he, he began to follow. Did he say where he went? No. He just said he started following? Yes. Did he say whether he found them? No. Does that accurately reflect what you just told me? Yes. Did he tell you um, how many subjects he thought there were? Yes. What did he tell you? Approximately five subjects. Okay, and then did he, did he make some speculation after that? Yes. What did he say? He told me that he believed that there were uh, a lot more subjects in the area. Did he say what he was basing that on? No. He said uh, that it was speculation. He specifically told you it was, he was speculating? Correct. 
And does that accurately reflect what he told you? Yes. At that point, did you talk to Mr. Kelly about the incident? Did you give him some advice? Yes. What did you tell him? Uh, I told him that uh, if he was in, in, in that kind of situation ever again, not to follow any subjects, to remain inside his uh, residence, um, and to call 911 to keep him, himself and his wife safe. Is that accurate, Thomaston? Correct, yes. And what did Mr. Kelly say to you after you told him that? Uh, Mr. Kelly told me that uh, he knew I was giving him advice, that, but that he would do what he had to to protect his property, and that um, if anything happened, uh, he would, uh, I don't recall the word. Um, would it help you refresh your memory on the specific phrasing if I showed you a copy of your report? Yes. And what specifically did he tell you? Mr. Kelly told me that he would take responsibility for his actions. He said that he had he was insisting he had to protect his property and did he say something else as well that he was conscious of the consequences and then you said and he would take responsibility for his actions correct and then I'm sorry before before I put that up did you uh, did you talk to him again about what your advice was even after he said that yes I reiterated what I I told him before. Stay inside and call 911? Correct. Does that accurately reflect what you just told me? Yes. Hold on a second. Four hours, 23 minutes. Thank you. I don't have anything else. Cross examination. Thank you, Judge. Can you tell me when you wrote this? It was uh, back in January of 2023. Did you write it on the same day that you responded to Mr. Kelly's property, or did you write it another day? I don't recall. Do you have the report in front of you still? Yes. Can you take a look at it, and will that tell you what date you authored the report? Yes. Oh, it's the answer my report. It is. Did you get a chance to take a look at your report? Oh, no, I, I wasn't sure if I was. Go ahead, take okay. a look at it and tell us if that refreshes your recollection about the date that you authored that report. It was 
was on Tuesday, January 31st. So it's the next day, is that correct? Correct. So you didn't offer this report the same day that you responded to the property. It was the following day. Correct. And when you did respond to the property on January 30th, you had some background information when you were traveling out there, correct? Correct. That came from dispatch, right? Yes. You were told by dispatch that the homeowner had reported shots fired at his house, correct? Yes. Possibly, anyway, right? And dispatch received that information from, do you know where dispatch received that information? Yes. Where did they receive that information? From Border Patrol. And do you know where Border Patrol received that information? From the homeowner. Okay. So there are three different levels of information being passed on until they get to you on the radio, correct? Correct. And when there are that many different levels of communication, sometimes things can get crossed. Is that fair to say? That's fair. Okay. At that point, when you're on your way out there, you hear from dispatch that Mr. Kelly has seen five men wearing camouflage and carrying backpacks. Is that correct? Yes. And dispatch also tells you that some of them are possibly carrying rifles, correct? Correct. So that's in your mind already when you're on your way to Mr. Kelly's property, correct? Yes. Dispatch also told you that the homeowner had taken his rifle and followed these subjects. Is that correct? Yes. So that's in your mind also, right? Correct. Do you know where the information came from regarding Mr. Kelly supposedly following these people? Do you know specifically where? If you don't, you don't, but do you know where that came from? No. Okay, so you don't know if that came from the homeowner or if that came from Border Patrol or if that came directly from dispatch, correct? Correct. When you arrived at the property, did you notice a Border Patrol? Did you see anybody from Border Patrol there? Two agents. What were those two agents doing when you saw them? I don't recall. Do you recall if you ever saw agents doing a perimeter or walking around the house? Do you recall seeing that? Yes. You do remember they were doing that? I recall them being by the property. Do you know where specifically? I remember seeing one by, by uh, it was the a third, small third road, and then we met. Okay. And you were carrying a weapon with you when you arrived at this property, is that right? Correct. Was it a rifle? Yes. And you were carrying that rifle because of the nature of the call, correct? Yes. You don't know what you're going to see or what you're going to run into when you answer a call like this, correct? Correct. And it could potentially be dangerous, right? Yes. Because you've hear, heard about weapons, you've heard about shooting, right? Yes. So you're obviously going to be alert for those kinds of things, correct? Yes. You're going to be looking for people, obviously, right? Yes. You're going to be looking for weapons, right? Correct. And you might be looking for somebody who might be injured, correct? Actively looking for a subject, honey. Well, you respond to a call where you hear that shots have been fired, correct? Correct. And when shots are fired, somebody might be injured, correct? Potentially. So you might be looking for somebody who's injured also, right? Potentially. And when shots are fired, somebody also could be dead, correct? Potentially. So you should be looking for somebody who might be dead as well, right? Potentially. Potentially? You weren't looking for somebody who was injured or dead in this case? Not at the time. Why not? Because the information that we received was the, the subjects were actively running um, and that Mr. Kelly had followed them. And you also received information saying that there was a shot fired prior to the subjects being seen running. Is that correct? Correct. And that shot could have obviously caused some damage to somebody or something, correct? Correct. So it's possible that that shot might produce evidence, let's say, of somebody who is either injured or dead, correct? Potentially. So you really should have been looking for somebody who might have been the victim of that shot, correct? Is 
that correct? That's right. Okay. But you're saying you weren't looking for somebody who was either injured or dead at this point. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. We talked about you doing the search of this particular area to the east of the residence. Is that fair to say? Can you repeat that question? You and other deputies searched an area that's generally to the east of this residence. Is that correct? We started uh, on the east side of the, the why residence. Did, why did you start in that area? Because that's where they pointed us. Um, they pointed, it was pointed to us that that's where the subjects were initially observed. When you say they pointed you there, who was that? Border Patrol was the, were the ones that made contact first. And uh, Border Patrol provided you with information? I don't, I don't recall, I'm sorry. Okay, so you don't know if Border Patrol pointed you to search that area? I don't recall. Okay, do you know if you talked, you had some encounters with Border Patrol before you searched this area, correct? Correct. Did you have encounters with anybody else before you searched that area? Not me. Uh, aside from the deputies. So you, you talked to the other deputies who were there, correct? Correct. And how many, who was there when you arrived? I was uh, Deputy Cabrera, Batch 139, Deputy Monreal, Batch 191, and Sergeant Garcia, Batch okay. 130. Were they all in the same place when you arrived? We were in, in, in the same area. What area was that when you first arrived? It was, um, on the side of the residence. The east side? I don't recall exactly if it was the east side or towards, more towards the... Okay. Um, when you go, so then the four of you, four deputies, do you all go to search this particular area? Correct. And is it your understanding that perhaps one of the other deputies had received information saying this is generally where these five people might have been? Yes. Okay, but nobody told you specifically this is where the five people were, is that right? I don't recall exactly. Okay, but there's some sort of collective knowledge that you have to search this area because this is where these people may have been seen, correct? Yes. And then, so you, Cross over an area where there's a ladder going over the first fence, is that correct? Correct. And you pointed that out on the map as that being to the east of the residence, right? Yes. And it's by that little, little, uh, I don't know what we want to call it, the little pump house that's by the house. Is that where the ladder is? Yes. There's another structure there, and then these two ladders go over the fence, correct? Yes. Did all of the deputies cross over using those two ladders? Yes. Okay. And was that something that you did sort of carefully to cross over these two ladders? Yes. Because you might fall, right? Correct. And you're carrying a rifle with you while you climb over these two ladders, right? Yes. Do you remember who goes over first or second or third? Do you no. remember? But all of the deputies do go over that ladder at some point, correct? Correct. So now, and I'll show you that drone footage in a minute if that will help, but you've gone over this ladder, now there's four deputies who are over the first fence, is that right? Correct. You're in an area where it's a pasture, right? There's another fence if you go out further east, is that correct? Correct. Did you guys spread out and search that pasture, or did you go, did you do something else? We, we kept walking and then hit that fence, and then we, we went underneath that second fence. So you did not search that pasture that you were in at that point, is that correct? We were, at the time we were actively searching. And my question is, when do you fan out and spread yourselves out? Is it while you're in that pasture, or is it after you cross that second fence? After we went underneath the second fence. Why didn't you guys spread out and fan out and search while you were in that pasture? I'm not sure. You don't know why you waited until you crossed over that second fence before you spread out? We, 
we had to cross underneath the, the second fence and we helped each other um, holding uh, each other's rifles while the other uh, crossed underneath. But you don't know at this point if there's somebody in this pasture? Nobody was visible at the time. Nobody was visible, but there could be somebody hiding in there, correct? Potentially. You didn't search for that, right? No. Okay. When you get to the second fence, describe how you guys crossed the second fence. We we went underneath the, the wire fence, so well, we passed each other's uh, uh, our rifles, um, kind of helped each other um, lift up the, the wire fence, and then the deputy went underneath and then passed over uh, the rifle. So did all of you cross that second fence in approximately <coughs> the same place? Yes. As each other did? Yes. Okay. And do you recall the wire, the bottom wire of that fence being smooth wire? I'm not sure I understand what. As in that not means. barbed wire. We're going to take our evening recess at this time. We'll come, we'll resume tomorrow at 8.30. Um, please remember the admonition of the court to not do any personal, separate, independent investigation of anything. Don't go to any of the locations. Do not talk to anyone about anything about this case. Do not look at social media. Do not look at news media. Stay off the internet as much as possible. And um, we'll see you tomorrow at 8.30. I, I, I was talking to the lawyers a little bit about what kind of who their witnesses are and schedules are, because I'm going to try and get, I know it's a holiday, uh, I'm going to try and get you out a little early, but they do have some witnesses who are coming out of town, at least one, um, flying in from out of town, and, and uh, there's some witnesses who need to go before that witness. So we're going to do our best, but hopefully we'll be able to get you out a little early tomorrow so you can have a long uh, holiday weekend. Um, I'll stay here with the lawyers. Ladies and gentlemen, have a pleasant evening. We'll see you tomorrow morning promptly. Thank you. Thank you. See, the jury is absent. Um, I just want to get some read from the parties about the pace and progress of the trial. I have no idea the scope of the witnesses or what you intend to prove and try to prove. So just give me some idea how we're, how we're doing. I mean, are we going fast or slower or right on track from what we thought we were doing? Or I think the jury's perspective is right on track. So, um, and can I just jump to tomorrow? Yeah, sure. We've got three witnesses, one out of state coming in. Two witnesses that we've built before. Um, if, with the court permission, we'll bring them on to lay foundation for some evidence that the third witness relies upon for his analysis. Or we can call them later so, just so we can speed up so we can get the out of state witnesses done and then hopefully we can break for the holidays and the jury. Does that sound good to me? Yeah. That's fine. Right. So, does that mean that what we would do with the witness is just put them on for one specific issue? get them off, put another witness on, get that specific issue, and then take the third witness, if that's okay with the court. I actually understood it the first time. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> Thank you, all right. We're recessed, we'll be back. Well, I just want to